This is the Bank of America Countdown to Green as we get set to go racing. NBC Sports, in association with NASCAR, presents Round 8 in the chase for the Nextel Cup Championship from the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. Hi, everybody. Our NBC race team happy to welcome you to the Bank of America Countdown to Green. I'm Bill Weber. Rain is a story. It has rained on and off most of the day. More rain is in the forecast for this afternoon. The green flag is scheduled for 2.55 Eastern time. That's less than 24 minutes from now. Let's take a look at the championship standings with three races to go. The top five separated by just 84 points. Championship, championship leader Matt Kenseth will start 36th. Four chasers start in the top 10. The drivers below Jeff Burton are mathematically alive, but realistically, they're long shots. The maximum point gain possible in one race is 156 points. So any of the top seven drivers in the chase could leave here as the point leader. Dave Burns is with the current point leader. And Bill, as you mentioned, he does start 36 today. It is his worst starting position of the season. Kind of a bad time for that, Matt. How do you guys dig yourselves out of this hole today? You mean qualifying? Yeah, starting way back in row 18. I couldn't hear you very good. Uh, it's not the first time we started in the back here. I think we started last in the spring after a failure and, and ran okay. And uh, I think we won from the back here once. So I'm not really concerned about the qualifying spot. To be honest with you, I'm more concerned with, you know, how our performance, uh, you know, is, is going to be today. So we didn't perform very good yesterday at all, really. And, uh, you know, we made a lot of changes overnight. Hopefully we did the right things to get our car a little more competitive. Be hard work today for the former winner and second place finisher from the spring race, Bill. Thank you, Dave. Brian Vickers won the poll on Friday with a new track record at Texas. It's his first poll of 2006. The Bank of America Countdown to Green will continue. It is their life. It's their livelihood. It might be classified as a small business, but it's certainly not a small business to the person who owns that business. We let small business owners do what they do best, which is run their business. And we do what we do best, which is to come in and give them advice and counsel on their financial affairs. That's probably the best part of, of what we do, is to be able to see companies start very small and then grow and to come into much larger companies. I am Rod Banks, and I'm a banker, and I'm proud to be part of Bank of America. We believe in small business. We've invested in small business. Today, we bank nearly one in five small businesses, and that, that's a powerful statement for us, is that uh, over two million small businesses in the United States bank with Bank of America. It's their business, and if we're good, it is paving the way for the next generation to come. Bank of America, higher standards. Extreme power of Energizer E squared lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Y'all ready to order? And y'all ready to check me out in the amazing picture clarity of DirecTV HD? It's broadcast in 1080i. I totally don't know what that means, but I want it. For the best in HD, get DirecTV. The Bank of America Countdown to Green is brought to you by. Bank of America by Energizer, keep going. And by Suzuki, maker of performance-driven motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Jimmy Johnson, second in the chase, comes to Texas with three straight top three finishes, including the win at Martinsville, he starts fifth. Denny Hamlin is third in points, 65 out of first. He rolls off sixth. He finished fourth here in the April race. Wouldn't it be great to hear exactly the NASCAR Nextel Cup chase for the championship continues from the Texas Motor Speedway here in Fort Worth. Time now for our Bank of America race stat. Jeff Gordon has 75 career victories, one behind sixth place Dale Earnhardt on the all time win list. But in the 11 races here at Texas, Gordon has never made it to victory lane. He was second here in 2002 and in the last three races has finished 14th or worse. Earlier today, here at the Texas Motor Speedway during driver introductions, here was Robbie Gordon's introduction. Starting eight and driving the number 20, the Home Depot Chevrolet, Tony Stewart. Robbie Gordon receiving a mixed reaction from the fans here at the Texas Motor Speedway after the roll bar padding incident one week ago in Atlanta. Hoping to go green, 
At 55 minutes past the hour in the Bank of America countdown, the green will continue from Texas. Thursday, will Earl return to his old ways? Are you Earl Hickey? Yeah, I'm Earl. Five of the ten chasers have won here at the Texas Motor Speedway, including three of the top five in points. In the April race here in Texas, chasers finished in five of the first six spots and eight of the first 12 positions. In two of the last four races here at Texas, the winning margin has been less than half a second. Those are just some of the reasons that this is the race and the place the fans have been waiting for. No rain right now. Everybody's getting fired up. Let's take you trackside here at Texas and join today's pre-race ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the United States Army Continental Color Guard present our nation's colors. Please remain standing as Dr. Roger Marsh from Texas Alliance Raceway Ministries offers today's invocation. Heavenly Father, today we pause to acknowledge your sovereignty and your authority. We also thank you, Lord, for the freedoms that we enjoy in this great nation. We ask you to bless and protect those who are watching over them and, and, uh, and protecting those freedoms for us. And Father, we pray today for Ryan Davies, an 11-year-old boy that needs our prayers so very much. We pray for today's race event. We ask you to watch over all the competitors. Keep them safe. Let it be a great event. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome U.S. Senator from Texas, Kay Bailey Hutchison. Thank you. Please join me as we honor our flag, our freedom, and our fighting men and women in the military by singing our national anthem performed by the TCU Marching Band. the TCU Marching Band and the soldiers holding today's Texas and United States flags from the U.S. Ceremonies Army continuing Army. here at the Texas Motor Speedway, getting ready for this afternoon's 500-mile race. 34-year-old Matt Kenseth won the series championship in 2003. He won here in 2002 after starting 31st. Today, he rolls off 36. The countdown is at zero, and our coverage of NASCAR from Texas will continue on NBC. This has been the Bank of America Countdown to Green. Let's go racing. So seven minutes. With three races to go, the chase for the next Tell Cup now focuses on a handful of hopefuls and two talented front runners. Matt Kenseth has used consistency to climb back to the top of the standings. And while he has yet to post a finish higher than fourth in the chase, he has turned trouble into opportunity. This could be his big day. He has won a championship. He has won at Texas. And he has a 26-point lead in the chase. Jimmy Johnson knows how hard it is to win the chase and how disappointing it is to finish second in the championship standings. The 2006 chase started slowly for Johnson, but a second at Charlotte and a third in Atlanta were sandwiched around the win at Martinsville, and the 48 is once again second overall. These two men lead a field of seven drivers that still have a championship dream. The rookie in third, 
veterans tied for four, and two stars teetering on the brink of elimination. It's a good old-fashioned showdown in Texas. Today, someone walks away with the lead, and someone will just walk away from the chase. NBC Sports, in association with NASCAR, presents Round 8 in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship from the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. A cloudy, damp, drizzly day here in Fort Worth, but we're getting ready to go 500 miles at the Texas Motor Speedway. Let's join Alan Bestwick. Down on the grid with Jimmy Johnson, who's standing alongside his car. And if any driver has momentum right now, it's Jimmy. His worst finish in the last three weeks is second. And Jimmy, if I listen to everybody in the garage this morning, you have a car that's one of the ones to beat today. How was it in practice? Uh, we felt really good with our race car in practice. It's been great off the truck. These guys have worked so hard to get this car turned around. This is the car we raced at Indy. And after last weekend's race, we thought we needed to bring it here. Chad and the guys in the chassis shop, uh, fab shop, uh, did a lot of work on this thing to turn around. So I have to thank them. And the thing's been money off the truck. So uh, we'll see. We've got a great car, a lot of racing ahead of us, and hopefully we can uh, put in a good effort today. You talked earlier this weekend about this year's chase feeling different to you and your team than it has in years past. How does it feel different and why? Uh, I think we're better prepared. Um, we have better equipment. I have more experience. The team has more experience. And uh, we, we feel like we're, we're more on our toes instead of being on our heels. Last year, the 20 car put a pace up that was real tough to keep up with. And I don't think we were as strong and as mature at that time. And we were kind of reacting instead of you know, being on our toes, kind of you know, driving the ship in a way. Uh, we're not there yet, but we feel more like uh, we're in control of our team, in control of our own destiny. And uh, we've been really performing well, so I'm very proud of everybody. Track conditions obviously have changed since you were last on the track yesterday, the NASCAR Busch Series race, and then the rain. What are you expecting in the opening laps? The track should be slick. I don't think there was enough rain to wash off a lot of the rubber, but I think the jet dryers leave a little residue on the track. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably have to clean that up, uh, take 10 laps or so, and then after that I think we'll have a great racetrack and put on a great show here in Texas. All right, Jimmy, good luck today. Also, real quick, before we go away, I want to congratulate Terry Lavani on a fine career and a uh, great friend, great teammate, and wish him the best. All right, Jimmy, thank you. Jimmy Johnson, he starts fifth today. We go up the grid today, Burns. With Denny Hamlin now, who is third in the championship chase, 65 points out. What does that feel like? Doable? Uh, mathematically, it's obviously doable. Um, does that feel like something you guys can capture in the next three races? Well, we're, we're the few guys that the people aren't talking about, so that's a good thing. Uh, we're, uh, we're one of the guys that I think, uh, you know, we can sneak up and win this championship. We got two really good racetracks coming up for us uh, here in Phoenix and um, you know they kind of play in our suit. We've run well here, run well at Phoenix. So uh, we gotta we gotta capitalize these next two weeks if we're gonna be championship contenders. And Alan was talking with Jimmy a little bit about momentum, but the last two weeks you guys have an eighth place, a second place finish. Do you feel like you've got some good mo going? I think so. I mean anything is better than the, the three weeks before that. We just had bad luck at Charlotte and uh, a couple of races before that. We just got to bounce back. It seemed like everyone's really had problems in this chase, other than maybe the 17. But he hadn't run as well as he did before. So. Uh, you know, they're starting to come back, and there's going to be a lot of factors that come into this championship. So, you know, we're going to try to stay focused, do the best we can. Um, and wherever we end up, you know, that's where that's going to be fine for us. You know, we're going to be happy. Of course, we're going to go for that championship, but we're not going to be upset if we're not, if we don't win it this year. And if your car, you start well, but if your car gets bogged down in traffic, have you found it, has it been able to pass race cars on the track at speed during practice this weekend? Well, during during practice, we really worked on our cars to stay low coming off the corner. I think that's going to be very important off of turn two, especially. A lot of cars get a bad arrow push there, and you know we worked on our cars to stay to pinch to the bottom as if we were going to pass somebody and make our car work that way. So I think, you know, that's going to work out in the long run. We just got to make sure, um, you know, we keep our car turning well enough to do that, but not so free that we get backed up in traffic and, and can't get ourselves back up front. So. It's going to be kind of a balance we're going to have to try to work through, but uh, you know, we're excited about it. Uh, our FedEx Kinko Chevrolet was it's stout and qualifying. We feel like we have an even better race car. 334 laps today, Bill. 500 miles. That's a long time. Good amount of time for these guys to tune on it. They hope they've got it all day. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. 43 drivers getting ready for the big race here at Texas. Last ride for two-time series champion Terry Labonte. 
He will retire after this race. Wanted to make his final run in his home state of Texas. Career start number 848. Terry made his debut September 4th, 1978 at Darlington, where he finished fourth. He is fourth all time in number of starts behind Richard Petty, Dave Marcus, and Ricky Rudd. And there you see the team photo with car owner Rick Hendrick and Terry's teammates at Hendrick Motorsports. Terry will turn 50 years old on November 16th, and after today, he walks away from the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. Of three decade career coming to a close today, and so many all stars have been at the front of the grid wishing Terry Labonte well. Overwhelming the support you've received from the NASCAR community this weekend, Terry. Well, it really has been, and it's been, uh, it's been fun to be a part of this uh, series for a long time, and I've uh, really enjoyed uh, every bit of it and uh, been able to do this for several years. And, uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, great drivers in here that I've raced against uh, over the years, and uh, it's uh, just kind of been a dream come true for me to be able to uh, uh, run as long as we have. Your car today is just labeled with so many memories throughout your career. Is there one that stands out as the memory for Terry Labonte? You know, I think they all are very important and they all stand out as special moments and uh, it's got some very special people on it. Uh, uh, Gary Dehart and I standing right here in Victory Lane after we won the championship. Uh, Rick Hendricks on here. Uh, Randy Dorton and John Hendrick on the back back here at uh, uh, a race at Talladega we won uh, Papa Joe Hendricks on the on the right side from a victory in Richmond and so many uh, really cool memories uh, on this car. Now if you talk to the drivers that have come up and visit you the, the second thing they'll say is hey what about the car over here this is a real race car <laughs> That's what it, this is a yeah. vintage Terry Labonte. Yeah. This is what everybody wants to look at is this one here and this was a car that I won the 1980 Southern 500 with and it's really this, just like like it was and uh, Everybody said, boy, I bet they were a handful. They were a handful. I can tell you that. They were, uh, they were a handful. But uh, they've changed a lot. And uh, you look at some of the safety features that it doesn't have compared to what we have today. It's, uh, they've come a long way. He's had quite a career. 22 wins, two NASCAR Nextel Cup Series championships. The Shifting Gears Tour coming to an end today here at Texas. Marty? Matt Dale Earnhardt Jr. relaxing with his crew, uh, trying to chill out a little bit. I guess the first question for you, you've been battling the flu all week. How do you feel? Feel better. Um, got in the infield care center and they kind of patched me up anyways to be able to get here today and, and race. But uh, car's been great, been fast all uh, weekend, and uh, we'll try to toughen up today and get it done. Yeah, it's kind of hard for you. You're trying to also win a championship in the middle of all this. 84 points back, three races. How do you get it done? Top fives, wins. You know, best we can do. Uh, we got opportunity to win here next week. Phoenix and we'll just uh, we'll try to take those opportunities to try to seize them. You've worn this poor car out to death this year. This is a 14th race on this car. When you have a car like that does it a give you more confidence. But why do you keep bringing it back to the racetrack Be only because it's running so well. Yeah because it's you know consistently finished in the top 10 and top 5 and we haven't really ever had that before within our organization. So when you find something good man that's the way we won in Bush Series championships. We had this one car that was our favorite and we ran it a lot. We take it from Charlotte to Rockingham. And it ran great everywhere. You just you take a risk on tearing it up, and not being able to get it back out there. If not, and if anything, losing it totally. But you know, you got to roll the dice there once in a while to, to to win in this sport. Let's talk about the conditions today. Uh, a little cloudy, and you seem to be better in the cloudy, cooler conditions yesterday versus when the sun was out. Is that correct? Yeah, we made some changes on the car, we raised the motor up, and tried to right rear shock it. Didn't work out really for that second practice, so we just kind of. You know, tossed that away and uh, didn't really worry about it. The first practice, the car was really fast, and yes, it was under conditions very similar to this. So, I'd like to race today, but uh, if we have to be here tomorrow, we will. And you love this racetrack, don't you? Your first Bush win and your first Cup win here. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a great track, and it's starting to age really well, where you can run two and three wide in the corners. So that even makes it even better. But that bump's been fun this weekend too, and one and two, hasn't it? Ain't went through it yet. You know, we <laughs> it's real high, and uh, we haven't got up there yet and moved the groove up, and and I don't know if we will. But under these kind of temperatures, the uh, with the extra grip uh, that it, that gives you might not get up that high but uh, if we have to get through there we'll see how it works and if it ain't working we'll have to move back to the bottom fourth place man the championship Dale Earnhardt Jr. Bill thanks Marty you see how it plays out for him today Terry Labonte brought a quiet determination and a ton of Texas class to the NASCAR next Stell Cup Series he has always been polite and popular with his peers and the press he's truly been a star a winner and a friend so today we say thanks to Texas Terry good luck and goodbye Tomorrow.
NBC Sports live at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, getting ready for 500 miles in round eight of the chase for the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup Championship. As you can see, safety vehicles on the track are trying to continue and dry the track. From the rain that fell earlier today, there is more rain in the forecast for this afternoon, but right now NASCAR says the track is not ready for racing, but hopefully will be shortly. It is not raining now. The track is drying out, so we're getting ready to go. But the pit boys are hard at work, and here's Dave. With Jeff Burton now, who is uh, fifth on the board in the championship, 84 points out. But let's start with the important stuff. How sweet is your wife to bring you pasta in between practice and the bush race yesterday? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that. How sweet is your wife to bring you pasta between the practice and race yesterday? Um, I still. <laughs> uh, did you, know, you enjoy that? If um, if you can't get your wife to bring you food, then you know what the heck. I mean, that's that's the least she can do. She is a sweetheart, though. She's standing right there, so yeah, she's 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 pretty nice. Okay, let's talk raising. else? Let's talk raising here. Just a little Burton family inside right there. Uh, you've got some ground to make up, and uh, you're starting in the back here. How are you going to do it, Jeff? Well, we're uh, we're going to do what we always do. I mean, you know, this, uh, we're just going to run our race and, and and try to pick people off one at a time. I mean, hopefully our car is uh, good enough to do that. Uh, it was pretty good yesterday. I, I mean, obviously, uh, pretty big different conditions, and and I think staying on top of the car is going to really be important because. As this track rubbers up, it's going to change a great deal. Uh, we didn't see a, much of a much of a second groove yesterday in the Bush race, and I think with the with the, the rain and all that, that'll even probably be worse for a little while. Hopefully, the second groove will get going, and that'll spread cars up. But uh, Senior Chevrolet was pretty good. We just got to be smart and, and uh, try to try to take it when it's available. And Jeff, going to this week, uh, finishing out last week, you were very frustrated at the end of the race with the late caution that came out for debris. Uh, what was your biggest frustration about that? That we finished 13th. <laughs> I mean, that, that was my biggest frustration. I, uh, you know, really at the end of the day, though, I mean, you know, we, we had a good car and, uh, you know, I got it in the wall and, and got the right front fender knocked in on the tire. And that's why we were two laps down. If I hadn't done that, then then the caution maybe not would have mattered. So at the end of the day, it falls on our shoulders and or my shoulders. And, you know, I was frustrated that the, five seconds later, we're one lap down. and got a chance to get the lucky doll. But again, it all, you know, we're in we're. We're more in control of our destiny than than, than other people, and and uh, I didn't do a good job and let us down. So that was probably what I was more frustrated about than anything. And this week, the Texas track is the same mile and a half, but it acts very differently than last week. Has it been hard to handle? Well, this is, uh, you know, as mile and a half goes, you can't get any further apart. The, this track, uh, from a grip level standpoint, is totally different than, than Atlanta. Uh, this track has a totally different characteristics, and, and that's a good thing. I, I think that, I think if all the mile and a halves were the same, it'd be boring. Now, this track has a has its own personality, uh, totally different than Atlanta. And I think, I'm, again, I think that's a good thing. And it's our job to find a way to take advantage of it. But uh, I, I feel pretty good about it. I mean, I, I'm no stranger to starting in the back. I, I, you know, I'm pretty good at that. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a challenge for us. We're not the only ones back here. And, uh, you know, I love, I love our sport because you never know what's coming. You know, you never know when you come on a Friday what's going to happen on that day or the next day. And, uh, I did not do a good job Friday and got us in the back, but uh, that's that's the way it goes. We'll go and try to make something happen. You never do know what's coming, like even like a carbo loading question <clears throat> from hey, yesterday. What uh, well, you know, you kind of set me up on that deal, and if you know if you want to get interviews with drivers, you need to not set them up because <laughs> that's my wife normally doesn't cook, and um, and she is standing right there. But when she does cook, it's very much appreciated, as as all the husbands at home probably feel the same it's very much appreciated when they do cook and and everybody should give their wife a hug and tell them they love them and thanks for thanks for dinner well and i did tell her that that was one of the sweetest ways i'd ever heard a meal request come from a husband to a wife you were very kind about that well I, in my house it's demanded i don't know about yours but if i don't speak nice i don't get pasta i can assure you of that do you have another deal that i need to know about? no mine works the exact same way alan uh, we better send this yeah, over to you. Dave, you better stop now. You're going to dig a hole for yourself, too. Kevin Harvick is all seated comfortably in his car. Nice place to wait out the rain delay. And Kevin, you had a tough race at Atlanta last week. Dropped you from 36 to 121 points behind the leader. A lot of people looking at the standings would say, boy, this must race. This race must have an incredible urgency to them. But can you do anything different than you normally have been? No, I mean, you just go about your business the same way you have all year and, and you just go out and, and race as hard as you can. And um, you know, we just we just haven't been able to find it at Atlanta for the last few years, really. Uh, it's just been a, probably our worst racetrack that we go to for whatever reason. So uh, that that part concerns us a little bit, and, and we didn't we just haven't been able to hit on it there. But we're we're pretty good here. We've uh, had some good practice sessions. Uh, 
Car's been really good in race trim and qualifying trim, and and uh, we're looking forward to today. So we're just going to do the same things that we've been doing, and, and you you know you, there's really nothing you can do to, to make it go faster or slower or do anything different. You just go out and do all the things and, and see how the circumstances fall at the end of the day. So it's been a wild chase. Everybody's been up and down, and we've uh, we've had a lot of bad luck in the chase, but um, we're going to keep at it. What's it been like to to deal with? the ups and downs of the chase from a driver's perspective on Monday when you go home and you think about your race from the day before well, what's it been like it's been um, for us it's it's probably you know it's probably been a lot like the other guys in, in the in the chase um, you know we come home and we talk about how our car ran and and usually in the middle of that uh, there's either a crash or a spin out or a, you know we broke a transmission a motor and, and just um, you know had all kinds of stuff go wrong and and um, for the most part, we've wound up with decent finishes uh, in, in most of the races. So in the races that we haven't, we've had, you know, a, a couple races where we've had a lot of trouble. So it's been uh, it's been up and down and, and we've we've done a good job this year of, of making ourselves no matter how good the weekend was or how bad the weekend was. When you get to Tuesday, it's over. You talk about it on Monday and Tuesday, it's over. So it's hard not to, you know, to to think about all the good things you've done. but. That's the way it's got to be. You got to be even keel across the board to to perform well week in and week out, and, and um, you know not get too high or too low. So it's been a, it's been a good good year. Um, we've won 13 races between the between the Bush car and the Cup car, and and um, all three cars have, have run really well. And I think that's that's the most important thing is Jeff's run good, we've run good, and Clint's run good. So when you're off, you you have more to lean on. So we're going to keep building, we're going to keep at it, and, and keep racing hard and having fun with it. This racetrack has a reputation for being very tough, very difficult to get through 500 miles and get a good finish. Why is it so tough here? Well, it's extremely fast. Uh, the racetrack has a lot of grip, and, and in order to go somewhere at the beginning of the run, you have to have you have to have um, you know a high percentage of throttle and a very low percentage off the floor. But uh, the the car falls off as as you go through the run. It gets tight or it gets loose or whatever whatever your car is doing. So it's it's a it's a fine line between knowing how hard you can drive at each lap. Each lap it changes. Each lap it gets tighter. It gets looser. Or whatever the case may be. So, um, you know, it's it's got it's got some characteristic in it. Uh, it's got a few bumps here and there. I know I know there's been a little bit made out of that this week, but nothing that nothing that affects our cars to the point where it hurts it. Um, I'd rather have a track with some bumps than have it smooth and, and real easy to drive. So, uh, this is this a uh, a tough place to race just because it's so fast. All right, last question. You're starting 21st today. Prospects for your team to get a top five out of this and maybe gain a little bit of ground. I think they're really good. Obviously, we went out really early in qualifying and, and uh, felt our car was was pretty good in qualifying trim as well. But uh, race trim, uh, we we were we were really happy with it and, and just uh, have to make the right adjustments on it in the first part of the race to gain that track position and then start tweaking on it from there. Thanks for the time. I didn't interrupt a nap or anything, did I? No, I'm just hanging out. I figure I'd rather hang out in here. I like it in here better than I do out there. <laughs> I don't blame you either. Good luck today. That's Kevin Harvick, and let's go uh, up pit road to Marty Snyder with a man who won last Sunday's race. Indeed, Tony Stewart did win last Sunday. He came to his second home, not in the race car, but in his pit box. So uh, it's fun to play spoiler, isn't it, Tony? I didn't know I was spoiling anything. I just went to go win a race, <laughs> you know. So uh, no, it was awesome last week. I mean, uh, our Home Depot Monte Carlo SS was was awesome, and uh, it was like I said in the Victory Lane interview. I mean, our one of our closest friends, Johnny Morris, was sponsoring the event and had that cool trophy there. And uh, Bob Nardelli, the CEO of Home Depot, was there with us. I mean, it was just a huge, huge weekend. All of our friends from Coca-Cola, because of them, their headquarters being in Atlanta, were there. And, uh, I forgot. I, I screwed up last week and forgot one of my newest sponsors, uh, Ray Rockmore uh, uh, Taxidermy in Hiram, Georgia, has been with us for a couple weeks now. And, and with the Bass Pro Shop race last week, I forgot uh, Ray Rockmore Taxidermy and the uh, interviews with all the sportsmen. Uh, plugs that we had to get in there so uh, hopefully Ray won't be too mad at me for forgetting him last week. Have they taxidermied anything for you lately? I've got my deer picked out for this year that I'm going to harvest in Indiana so uh, he's already promised me that he will uh, the good thing is uh, I've got an inside connection there that, that gets me to the front of the line so uh, I'm pretty excited about hopefully uh, getting me a good buck this year. We take Wally hunting with you and maybe uh, take a shot at him? Wally is like He's like a mass murderer. I mean, he'll go out. <laughs> if it moves, he'll shoot it. He so. likes to shoot things. Yeah, he loves to shoot things. I like to make stuff blow up when I shoot stuff out, outside. But uh, Wally's like a 
I don't know, like a Jeffrey Dahmer or somebody. He just likes to shoot no. anything anytime. Not quite that bad, no. No, he's an expert expert marksman. He's a very good hunter. He's a very, very, he's probably one of the best hunters in NASCAR. Uh, between, between him and Richard Childress, I would say they're probably the two best hunters that we have in NASCAR. Wally uh, has been all around the world hunting, and so is Richard. So uh, I, know, I know we got a bunch of guys that actually are staying this week and doing some hunting while they're in Texas here. I understand it took actually two trucks to get that tra that trophy home is that correct part of it went in your hauler and part of it in Denny Hamlin's hauler I don't know but I know when they said I, I said it's not going to go in the plane <laughs> I knew that <laughs> unless we could strap it to the wing so uh, no it was it was pretty cool I mean it's uh, my father wants to put it in our new USAC shop in Brownsburg but I don't know I, I think it should go to our office in Indianapolis where the race fans can come see it let's talk about you getting up that fence I noticed you got there a lot quicker this time around you are 20 pounds down my man how have you uh, lost all this weight well, I, uh, last time I weighed I was 14 and that was two weeks ago from tomorrow so uh, I've just got a trainer Mark Arnone so my trainer he came from Charlotte and um, you know he goes with us 24 7 and everybody goes well, why don't you why don't you just get a gym membership and go work out I haven't even been home for almost four weeks now so the good thing about having Mark along is that you know when you're in the bus he's, he's always watching what you're eating making sure you're eating the right things at the right times and uh, I didn't even realize it was going to be as important on the weekends, but I mean, there's times that I'll be in talking to Zippy and he'll just stick something. It might be a cut up apple or something and some juice to, to drink. So, uh, you know, just eating four or five times a day versus twice a day, which is what I was doing is a lot healthier for me. And, you know, we're working out even the other day we were working out on the bus, uh, uh, some exercises that he's learned to do while we're on the road and don't have a gym accessible to us. So uh, it's really been a lot of help to us. Um, this winter is going to be pretty hard because we're, we're getting ready to pick the pace up two or three times what we're doing. He said so uh, you know he wants to get these next uh, three races out of our way and then uh, you know get ready for next year is it hard to stick to the discipline of that because really it's a lifestyle change isn't it it, it is it's uh, definitely a li lifestyle change I mean no more uh, donuts no more ice cream right before bed and <laughs> and uh, you know my, my chili and spaghetti and pasta and and um, my favorite thing in the world Pizza King pizza I've had to cut way back so uh, it hasn't exactly, there's days that he's not my favorite person to see, but uh, you know, every day when I put my uniform on and I look down and the Velcro's an inch and a half past where, yeah. where the end of it is and it used to be an inch the other direction. So, uh, you know, that makes me a lot happier. And that has certainly helped in the racing department. Are you guys having more fun? You, you seem a lot more relaxed these days, perhaps because you're not in the chase. Well, I mean, obviously you don't have the stress that the guys that are in the top 10 have. and. Uh, you know, anytime that you can just go race on a weekend and not worry about points and just strictly go worry about the wins, that's uh, that's the fun for us. And you know, I think we're all having we're all more excited too because the season's about over and yeah. we get to go hunting. So uh, Ray Rockmore taxidermy in Hiram, Georgia. That's I, I should be caught up now since I missed last week. But uh, it's uh, you know we're all looking forward to the season being over. You know, hunting season in Indiana is coming in. So. Uh, just getting ready to do some things that we like to do in the offseason finally. Sometimes, though, you don't want the season to be over. They have been on a roll lately in the last five races, three top fives and two wins. That's some pretty good numbers. Matt? The guy who was on a roll back in the spring here at Texas was Casey Kane, went to victory lane. A tough run last week at Atlanta. How tough were you on yourself Monday morning? Oh, I was, uh, I was tough when I woke up, and then I just kind of took the day off. I... Did some other things. Um, Tuesday was a much tougher day. Monday was probably the best day of the week. When you look here, looking at the racetrack, now it is drying, and the Casey Kane lane up high, the last lane up high, is almost dry. Are you going to be up there much today, or are you going to be down on the bottom? It's tough to say. The track, the, the cars have so much grip this race compared to the first one. I don't know if we'll be able to get up there and actually be fast or not. I, I tried it yesterday in the Bush car. Had, at times it was decent, but usually it wasn't as good. So. We'll see. I think this uh, Dodge Dealers UAW Dodge Charger will hopefully will handle better than the Bush car and we'll have a shot to run up there and run about anywhere and, uh, you know, challenge for a win. After the tough break last week uh, and the big hit in the points, do you reassess your goals now and say, OK, we want to get three wins before the year's out or what are you aiming for now? Uh, I think probably just carry momentum into the offseason. I mean, we want to keep doing what we've been doing, try to win today, try to win next uh, Sunday and then and then finish it up strong at Homestead. But I mean, we just we need to finish these races, finish up front, have some fun. The crowd here in Texas is great, like always, and uh, I always enjoy racing here. It's one of the funnest places to come each year, so it'd be nice to have a good run today. Now, besides being a driver next to a cup, you're also an open wheel, short track, midget, sprint car, silver crown owner. Are you going to expand your stable in 2007? Yeah, we got some good things going on. You know, uh, this year we're running all Mopar engines, which was a big, big benefit to our team, and uh, 
run the full outlaw deal again next year with Joey Saldana, and we're making some few changes there to make a hopefully a stronger stronger team there. And then uh, we're going to start a few more teams too, run some USAC midgets and sprint cars, and be all Mopar stuff. So it should be exciting. I'm I'm pretty pumped up to uh, to have more teams. You know, Tony Tony's done it for a while, and he enjoys it. I enjoy going to those races with him, and now I'll have some more cars to to go watch also. Now he is the highest qualified driver in the chase. He's up here in the top four. AB? We are walking with Jeff Gordon, who's coming right over here to his car. We'll get a question or two from him, and then he'll get in and get ready to go race while they finish drying up the racetrack. Uh, Je now, you got a story to tell me about this car that you were raffling off? Where's my camera? I don't want to stand between you and it. Yeah, we've been talking uh, about this raffle, and we finally uh, gave it away. And I uh, want to say hi to Norma Callis. Uh, she couldn't be here, but her family is here to, to, to get the keys to that black Corvette 2005. And uh, she's 75 years old, never had a driver's license or, or, or driven a car. So uh, she's going to get a lot of rides in a, in a pretty awesome Corvette. And she just wanted to contribute to the foundation, end up buying some raffle tickets and winning a uh, pretty awesome Corvette. So. Thanks to uh, everything that, that all I want to thank everybody for for contributing. We raised a lot of money uh, for the Jeff Gordon Foundation through this event, and uh, it's been awesome. Now it's time to go racing. Yeah, just say a quick uh, quick question about your car and your potential for today's race. Uh, you know what? We uh, we've really struggled at this racetrack the last few times we've been here, but I feel like our team has made such huge strides in our performance on the mile and a half that it's going to pay off for us today. We weren't great yesterday, but uh, I feel like Steve Latard and all the guys in the Dupont Chevrolet Monte Carlo made some good adjustments. I'm um, not starting where I'd like to, but uh, hopefully we're going forward. All right, good luck today, Jeff. Time for him to head to the office and get ready to go to work. Jeff Gordon does start in 23rd spot. Bill? Thanks, Alan. Drivers have been called to their cars. Track drawing continuing here at the Texas Motor Speedway. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll take the track side and get the command. You're watching the chase for the next Cup Championship on NBC. When my husband got hurt and missed... The drivers have been called to their cars, getting ready for the command here at the Texas Motor Speedway for 500 miles of racing action. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with Wally Dollaback and Benny Parsons. Thanks for having us in for the race. Three to go in 2006, and this is Elimination Day. When the checkered flag falls here at Texas, the championship dream for some drivers will be over. Who? Well, a lot of that could depend on the championship leader, Matt Kenseth, who starts 36th. Yeah, we, we talked about a couple weeks how those guys can turn a bad situation into a good situation. They've they've run, they've won four races this year, and they're so good at just coming back. Now he starts deep in the field. This is going to be tricky because of the track being wet, drying out, a little bit of grease from the, the jet dryers on the track. It's a one-lane racetrack. He is going to have to pick them off one by one. It's going to be difficult to get track position. But this is a team. If anybody can do it, he can do it. And that could open the door for the guy number two in points. Jimmy Johnson, we interviewed him a couple of times as we waited out the rain delay. And, folks, you can see and hear the confidence in his voice. These guys know they have a very good race car, and they're going to continue that those good finishes they've had the last three or four weeks. There are 44 competitors in this race, 43 drivers, and a very tough racetrack. See how it all plays out here at the Texas Motor Speedway this afternoon. Three to go in the chase for the next Tell Cup. Let's get the command. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christy Labonte as she gives the command to start the engine to her dad, Terry Labonte. Dad, for the last time, start your engine. So the 43 cars run a life on pit road. Three races to go, and the chase for the next Tell Cup championship is about to continue here in Texas. NASCAR Next Tell Cup Racing from the Texas Motor Speedway is brought to you by Bank of America. By the Ford Fusion, bold moves, they happen every day. By Napa Auto Parts, Napa, get the good stuff. And by UPS, proud sponsor of Dale Jarrett's 88 Ford. Go, Dale, go. 
Cars have come to life along pit road, getting ready to roll out here at the mile and a half Texas Motor Speedway. Time for a ride in Wally's World, driven by State Farm. This is one track that Wally Dallenbach likes to call home. He knows all about the rich racing tradition here in Texas, and he knows the people of Texas love their high school football too. Most people don't know that when Wally was in high school, he took the field almost every week. After all, somebody had to cut the grass. But now it's all paid off. Wally finally got a cheerleader in his car. special guest, Minka <laughs> Kelly. You play Lila Garrity, a Panther cheerleader on Friday Night Lights. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Wally. I'm not trying to make you sick. I'm just trying to put <laughs> heat in the tires, honest. <laughs> Wally, you're such a clown. Well, I'm glad I didn't eat breakfast. Yeah. You're a high school <laughs> cheerleader, but you're in your early 20s. You're a little academically challenged, aren't you? <laughs> I know enough math to know that you and I have the same amount that is true. Did you see Wally's Well last year here? Because I almost wrecked. <laughs> now I see why you have so many scratches on the side of your car. I, I haven't even hit the wall yet. Give me a break. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> I can't hear you. You want to be closer to the wall? OK, I can do that. All right, now you've been shooting the show in Texas, actually in Austin. What have you learned about Texas football? I learned that everything is bigger in Texas. That's true. Thanks for being a part of Wally's World. Thank you so much for having me. Now, most people bring me presents, you know, after I'm done with the ride. You can have this pom-pom. Oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Only on Friday nights. Friday Night Lights, a new episode this Tuesday at 8, 7 Central. Friday Night Lights right here on NBC. Did you have a good time, Wally? Always. Bye. Oh, boy. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, the proud sponsor of the Budweiser Poll Award, given the fastest qualifier in each NASCAR next Elk Cup Series race. Budweiser congratulates Brian Vickers for his first poll of 2006. We'll see him in the Budweiser shootout when we get to Daytona in February. Here is today's Harley Davidson starting grid. Brian Vickers with a new track record and Elliott Sadler on the front row, the two fastest laps of the 2006 season. In row two, in the inside, Kurt Busch. On the outside, one of our chasers, Casey Kane. On the inside of row three, Jimmy Johnson. On the outside, Denny Hamlin. Two guys chasing the next tail cup. In row four, the rookie, David Gilliland, and last week's winner, Tony Stewart. Inside of row five, Robbie Gordon, good qualifying run for him. On the outside, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Back in row six on the inside, Kyle Busch and Scott Riggs. Teammate to Case Kane on the outside. Row seven, Bobby Labonte, next to Clint Boyer. In row eight, on the inside, Carl Edwards. On the outside, in the 0-1 car is Joe Nemechek. On the inside of row nine is David Strimmy in a backup car and Kenny Schrader on the outside. Row 10 has the rookie Reed Sorensen and the former Next Elk Cup Series champion Dale Jarrett. On the inside of row 11, Kevin Harvick, another one of our chasers. On the outside, good run for Mike Bliss in the 49 car. Jeff Gordon says he hopes he can go far from the inside of row 12. Ryan Newman on the outside. Right behind them in row 13, Casey Mears and J.J. Yaley. On the inside. Jeff Green in the 66 car. Mark Martin on the outside, but he will be having to go to the rear of the field. He's got a backup car he's starting in today. Jeff Burton on the inside of row 15, and Dave Blaney on the outside. Back in row 16, Sterling Marlin and Paul Bernard made the starting field here today. From 17 on the inside is Kenny Wallace in the 78 car. On the outside, Martin Chuex Jr. On the inside of row 18 is Kyle Petty. And there we see our next Elf Cup points leader, Matt Kenseth, on the outside of row 18. Row 19, Ward Burton back in the four car this week, and he starts alongside Michael Waltrip. And on the inside of row 20, Greg Biffle in the 16 car. He's got his work cut out for him. And on the outside, Travis Quaffle. On the inside of row 21, we find Tony Raines and also Jamie McMurray on the outside. 
and making his final start to the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. Two-time series champion Terry Labonte starts 43rd. Drivers that didn't make it, Mark Martin and David Stremme, are both in a backup car. Both will drop to the back of the starting field. Going to be a busy day down on pit road. A lot of stories down there. Let's get you warmed up. Here's Alan. Well, Bill, Matt Kenseth, the championship leader we talked about already, starts back in 36th position today. So job number one for him is to avoid trouble. Many of these Texas races feature an early crash that a potential champion doesn't want any part of today. Crew chief Robbie Reiser told me this morning he thinks they have a top eight car, but they won't get there all at once. They'll have to slowly and steadily work their way up through the field and hope for a top ten finish by day's end. Matt. Alan Mark Martin's chase for that elusive first Nextel Cup Series championship took a severe blow last week at Atlanta. Unfortunately, bad luck and frustration carried over to Texas. He was involved in a crash in final practice, forced to go to a backup car. They've transferred over the setup and the primary car's engine. The good news, this is the same race car he finished top 10 with here in the spring. Mark is cautiously optimistic, though, about his chances, trying to get back to victory lane, something he hasn't done in 2006. His tenure at Roush Racing coming to a close. Would love to end that winless streak and get back to victory lane. He's never won from deeper than 25th in his next Hill Cup Series career, so if he can pull that off today, it would be huge. Marty? Well, Matt, Casey Kane told me moments ago that he has had real problems letting go of the accident that he felt he caused last week in Atlanta and probably took out their championship hopes for the nine team as well. They finished 38th in that race. Now they are ninth in the championship standings, 210 points out of the lead. He talked with Ray Evernham earlier this week. Ray said, you need to move on and focus on Texas. It's the best medicine we have. They won here in the spring, and they're bringing the car today that they won with at Charlotte three weeks ago. They Marty Jeff Burton is fifth in the championship chase and he's up in the first section of pit road but in and among a lot of other race cars he hopes that being the 1997 winner here will prove a little bit lucky for him maybe another victory here but as far as making his way forward in the chase they're not in the position yet to take big risks risks that if they work put you further ahead but if they fail knock you completely out of the chase crew chief Scott Miller told me we're getting close to that mode today we might take some slight risks but we're not going to jeopardize the chance we still have at winning the next Hell Cup Bill. Thanks, Dave. Hope you guys enjoy the race down there this afternoon. Go online to NBCSports.com and check out the entire pit map. It's in the NASCAR section. And while you're there, Marty Snyder blogs about Kevin Harvick's decision to do the double last week in Atlanta and Memphis. It's all at NBCSports.com. Cars are on the track, but they're still working on trying portions of it. So we'll take a break, come back, and hopefully put the green flag in the air. Race number eight in the chase for the next Hell Cup championship. Tuesday. Finishing television of NASCAR on NBC takes your NASCAR experience to another level with Sony Full HD 1080, the world's most powerful HD experience. Cloudy temperature in the upper 60s here. Rain in the forecast for later today. Rain here this morning into early afternoon, but as you can see, the cars are on the track. And they're trying to help the uh, jet dryers by drying that high groove up there. You can see them all in single file, trying to help dry the racetrack. Yeah, the heat coming off these headers and stuff underneath these cars, it generates a lot of heat. So having uh, all these cars out on the racetrack, 43 cars on the track, will definitely speed up the process of getting this thing ready. My guess those exhausts are up to six, 700 degrees. And they need this racetrack to be dry when they throw the green flag because folks, this thing is wicked fast. How fast? Oh, 196.235 <laughs> miles per hour fast. Yeah. The fastest qualifying lap of the year. And Average. Average. Now you're smoking over, you're smoking into these corners over 200. Oh, probably a little over 205. Yeah. And those top four cars? All broke the track record. How I about mean, that? This, this thing is just wicked, wicked fast. That makes it even more challenging. And here are the championship standings talked about a little earlier, and you can see the starting positions on the right-hand side of the screen. Harvick and uh, Jeff Gordon mathematically in there. You go back to Mark Kane, actually everybody behind Burton. You know, you're still in it by the math, but the problem is you not only have to make up the points, you got a bunch of people you have to pass as well. So we'll see how it all works out today. But when the checkered flag falls here today, some of these guys are going to just about officially be out of the chase for the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup Championship. I mean, Jeff Gordon and those guys, they can make up 121 points on pick anybody, on Junior or Kenseth or Jimmy Johnson. 
but I don't see how they can pick up right. that many points on all of them. That's right. Tough to do. A lot of things we'll be watching for today, and especially how these cars handle. You want to take us inside the Home Depot virtual garage and take a look? You know, what's going to happen as we go inside this garage? We talk about the groove being around the bottom, bottom of the racetrack. But what's going to happen is if you're in front of some guy and he wants to get by you, all he's got to do is simply drive up right behind you in the corner. He packs that air under the rear of the car, also takes that air off the rear spoiler. And when he does that, you have no choice but lose downforce on the rear. You get loose, you move up the racetrack, and the driver behind takes the position away. And that works really well, but you have to remember one thing. Payback. They can do it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Working on the front stretch here, Texas Motor Speedway, mile and a half track. Seats for about 159,000 people, plus 200 suites, and they park them packed full in the infield. And we talked about last week in Atlanta how that Atlanta racetrack was a, an engine killer. Well, this thing is no different. That's right. Because there is 500 miles, and they're going to be turning over 9,000 RPMs down the straightaway and over 8,000 RPMs in the, or right at 8,000 RPMs in the middle of the corner. For an average of 85, 8,600 RPMs, for a push rod engine to do that for 500 miles is hard. Exactly right. And the temperatures, the way they have been, being cooler, that means they're getting optimum horsepower out of these engines right now. You see the Chevrolet pace car. Take a look at our Chevy drivers to watch and their best Texas finish. Earnhardt Jr. got his first career win here. Jeff Gordon has never won here, has not won at Phoenix, and has not won at Homestead. Jimmy Johnson's best here is a third, and Kevin Harvick's best, a fifth place finish here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Our Team Chevy drivers to watch this afternoon. Brian Vickers and Elliot Sadler on the front row. Three laps to go before we go green. Wally's going to try and jump on a radio. We'll here. see if we can get a hold of Jeff Burton. We'll check it out. Hey, Jeff, this is Wally up in the booth. Can you hear me? And I got you. All right, man. Well, they're saying three to go. I, that might be a little optimistic. What does it look like from where you're sitting? I think everything's ready except the uh, the front straightaway here. You know, it's hard for me to tell if this outside group is wet in the trial or if it's just a different color asphalt. But uh, I think the rest of it's pretty ready. I mean, in all honesty, this outside, if you're up here, I think you're probably in trouble anyway. So I think it's pretty close. You're starting down on the bottom, right? <laughs> I think that's a good thing today. Um, you know, the outside just didn't work very well yesterday. It might come in today, but uh, this place is so hard to pass on, so fast. Uh, you get that arrow push pretty quickly here. So, um, you know, we're just going to do what we do. And long race, take our time, and hopefully get where we need to get. Well, hopefully everybody else will have that same uh, concept. So uh, good luck out there. All right, thank you. Jeff Burton starts 29th today in that singular Chevrolet. Take a look at our AutoZone in the zone drivers. Casey Kane, six wins this season. Matt Kenseth has the 17 top five finishes and Jimmy Johnson has just had another outstanding year. Our AutoZone in the zone drivers, the season leaders. Field has gotten a two to go signal. Let's check in with Alan. And just a little something down here on pit road, Bill, to keep in mind for the first set of pit stops. The teams have all been working on drying their pit spaces, but the pavement beyond their pit spaces and right on the edge of that line, still a little bit damp. Picture the guys running around the car with the jack and the air wrenches and the tires trying to hurry and make a smooth stop. If somebody loses their footing, slips out from under them, it could cost their driver a lot of spots on the track and put him back in the middle of a lot of traffic he doesn't want to be in. So that's something these guys will be thinking about on the first pit stops. They'll run the dryers down through here and try and clean it up as best they can, but that footing will be something to watch for in a little while. Well, it, it, not only that, but you're coming off the racetrack with hot tires, and you see the pit lane was actually wet. So then you get down on that pit lane, your tires get really wet, and when you want to go to turn in your box, it doesn't work very well. So it's really, you know, it's really uh, scary for the pit guys because their drivers and other drivers are going to be trying to turn into their box with wet tires. Waiting to see if the field gets the one to go signal here. They're getting the one to go signal and then it will be a green yellow situation. So we will start this race under the yellow and the green. The laps will count, but the drivers obviously will hold their positions. I think the I think the Dickies man got premature with the green flag, don't you? 
He's just rehearsing. He, oh, really. he's rehearsing. Okay, yeah. all right. Now let's talk a little bit about this track because it, it looks a lot like obviously Atlanta and Charlotte, but it's it's very different. And the, a lot of things the guys seem to talk about are the transitions off of turn two and off of turn four. Well, you know, when if you were here with us yesterday when Kyle, we were explaining that. You know, like in Atlanta, you could just go barreling off down into the corner at 200 plus miles per hour, and you had all that racetrack, you had all that banking to hold you. And it, it, it seems like here you don't have it. You go barreling off, and you don't have that banking. To be, it, it's real quick, and you don't have it. It's not as secure when you go flying down in there. So, you know, right now, this track, especially yesterday, uh, the groove was like about one and a half lanes, and it started working up, and that's what we were hoping to see. And we'll see that, you know, in this race today. The groove will move up, but Atlanta, they were up on the top on the second or the third lap, and you won't see that here. And now it's official, the green flag in the air here at Texas, but we do start under a green and yellow condition. The laps count. The drivers have to hold their positions on the racetrack. This basically gets us started and we continue to work on drying the racetrack and pit road. Let's get an update from Dave Burns on Robbie Gordon's machine. When these guys get on the grid and their cars are all lined up, the crews and the crew chiefs continue to look at them carefully. They're eyeballing the other competitors to see what they're running in the way of tape on their grills and everything. Sometimes they notice something amiss with the car and that's what happened with Robbie Gordon's team. They saw that the left rear tire had a three quarter inch rivet in the left rear tire. That'll make your tire go flat. They pointed it out to a NASCAR official. They allowed them to change that left rear tire without penalty, which is the case when you touch your car before you go racing here in a lot of cases. So NASCAR let him do that. They change the left rear and Robbie will start in his ninth place qualifying position. And that's a good catch. That is a good catch. And I'm sure that those guys behind Robbie Gordon are happy that. that he was able to change that tire. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and some of those other fellows back there. Been an interesting week for Robbie Gordon. Fine $15,000 for the driver, $10,000 fine for his crew chief, 50 driver and owner points and put on probation until the end of uh, the 2006 calendar year for actions detrimental to the sport. That all coming from the roll bar padding incident last week at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. We offered Robbie a chance to discuss that with us, but uh, he declined here this weekend in Texas. We're under green and yellow. The laps counting here at the Texas Motor Speedway, waiting to get that yellow flag withdrawn. Then we'll go full bore racing on NBC. Field has doubled up. We will go full bore green flag racing. Next time they cross the start finish line, race number eight in the chase for the 2006 NASCAR Nextel Cup Championship. A little over a mile from going green. Let's check in with Dave. And Bill, everyone's been watching the weather here, including Carl Edwards and his team. This was their radio chatter on the subject moments ago. Right earlier this morning, it said 100% chance of rain starting at 6 p.m. Said 80% chance until 6. So keep an eye out. Tyler wanted me to let you know that those clouds you see out there, they can be uh, described as a straddle cumulus cloud, Carl. I don't know if that's exactly correct. Uh, could be. If it starts raining, they'd be cumulonimbus, I believe. Uh, I just hope we accumulate at least half of the laps of this race, Bill. That's all I know. And he's a pilot. He should know, shouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, he watches it a lot, and it matters today. Carl Edwards in that 99 car. If it starts raining, wouldn't it be a rain cloud? That's what I would think. Carl, the defending champion of this race. His last victory came here one year ago. Now, since this race has officially started and three laps are complete, guess what? Jimmy Johnson is now the championship leader. Because Matt Kenseth starts so deep in the field right now, Johnson is the championship leader, Hamlin is second, and Kenseth is third. Pace car to pit road, yellow flag back in its stand, waiting for the green flag to wave here at Texas. Race number eight in the chase for the championship. Check out Kurt Busch in that two car. Kurt comes from third to lead the first lap. Oh, Gilliland sandwiched in there. Robbie Gordon, thankfully, backs off and gives him the spot, or that could have been ugly. That could have been very ugly very soon. Kyle Busch in that five car was paying attention, so he didn't run over Robbie. 
Tony Stewart in the 20, last week's winner. There's Robbie in the seven. Elliot Sadler, who started outside the front row in the 19 car. That 19 car is working his way back towards the back. Yeah, well, I think right now, especially with the track conditions, the bottom is the place to be. That's where I think everybody needs to get right now. In other words, Elliot Sadler does not want to be where he is. No, he's trying to find a spot to get down, but nobody's been polite enough yet to, there you go, Casey Kane, his teammate, gave him a break. On board with Casey, Dale Earnhardt Jr. right behind him. Drivers in yellow on the ticker at the top of the screen are the 10 men in the chase for the next Telcom. There you see the updated points as they run right now. And a big shift early because Kenseth had to start 36th. And it's worked his way up to 32nd. And there, BP, what you were explaining on that Home Depot garage, you see Earnhardt got right out in the back of that nine cars bumper. It loosened up Casey a little bit, which slid him up the racetrack, and it's exactly what that showed when we showed it. Marty, what's going on with the eight? Because right now he's going forward. Exactly, Wally, and that's what they expect to do for most of the day. I talked to Tony Urie Jr. this morning. He said, we expect to see the same race today that we saw last week in Atlanta. Our car, same one we ran there. We think the tires will handle the same way they did there. And then that race, they ran out front for most of the day, doing what they're doing right now, going forward, currently ninth. But as we saw in Atlanta, if we remember, his car was really, really good at the get-go, and then that car fell off after some laps. So we just have to see if it's the same here at uh, Texas. David Gillum in that 38 car started up front, but he's hanging in pretty well. Best run he's had in the next Hell Cup races so far in his very abbreviated career. Kyle Busch on board looking at Gillen in the 38 ers Dave. And that young driver has a veteran crew chief in Todd Parrott. Spoke with Todd this morning about their upfront starting position. He felt very confident based on the way David's been running the mile and a half tracks the last couple of weeks. Not always with the finishes, but running very well and felt like they could hold their position early on in the race. That's sixth and seventh right there. There we go. Got him a little bit loose in the corner. Junior's going to try and follow him through underneath. Oh, Gillen knows he's there. Here, Junior, playing with the accelerator, gets out of the gas, then gets back in. Yeah, you can't run this racetrack flat. So yet what you do is you go down at the corner here, you roll out of the throttle, you let the car roll about to the center, then you start picking up the gas again, and then you really handle the throttle as you're coming off the corner. Down the back stretch. Junior fourth in the championship standings. Early runs in the seventh spot. A couple of good sized bumps down there in three and four BP that the guys are got to be careful on. You, when you get down on those bumps, you've got to be real careful what you're doing with that steering wheel and the throttle because it can upset the car. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be on the throttle wide open and turning the car and go through a bump because it will spin out. Pit road report from Matt Yoakum. Three to go, Bill, and the 11 team and Denny Hamlin, they brought their moneymaker car, the car that swept both races at Pocono here to Texas. Very optimistic, but early on, the car extremely tight. He has lost six spots here in the early going. Dave? And Matt, the five car of Kyle Busch right now being challenged by a Dale Earnhardt Jr. One of the places Junior may be able to pass is from the center off the corner. Right now, Kyle's reporting that his car doesn't turn well at that spot. There goes Junior. Marty? And Dave Wally and those guys were talking about the bumps, especially in three and four. Junior doesn't like the bump in one and two, Wally. So what he does, he tries to stay as low as he can. He said if you're four feet off that bottom white line in one and two, you'll really hit that bump. If you're a little below that, you can kind of avoid that major bump in one and two. Yeah, that's a big bump down there, Marty. That'll make your CD player skip, won't it? <laughs> exactly, and I'm sure Junior's just skipping right now because he's a little off that white line. You see that bump right there on the in-car camera as he went through it. Junior in sixth, and it's Kyle Busch, Casey Kane, David Gilliland, and Scott Riggs. Started under the green and yellow. Then we got the green flag. Kurt Busch started third, led the first lap, and has led basically all of them since we went true green flag racing. He's led more laps today than in his seven prior races here at Texas. He's out front. 
Texas. NASCAR Next Stock Cup Racing from the Texas Motor Speedway is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR and proud sponsors of Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the number eight car. By Wrangler, makers of Wrangler Jeans Company. New fits, new comfort, new styles. By State Farm, great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And by AmeriQuest Mortgage, proud sponsor of the American Dream. Fans waited out the rain here today. Saw the first four laps under yellow, then we dropped the green flag. Kurt Busch went to the front and has stayed there. There's Vickers in second, then it's Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Casey Kane. Matt Kenseth started 36th, was moving forward, but that progress has slowed, Alan. Yeah, moved up to 29th spot in the opening couple of laps, Bill. Now has slipped back, and he's running in 32nd place. He called on the radio a couple of laps ago, said no grip. His car sliding around the racetrack and uh, didn't really offer anything else other than Robbie, no grip. I'm loose in, I can't turn in the center, and that was the last transmission, so he's struggling a little bit now. Matt. Two spots back, A.B., is his teammate, Mark Martin, now the same setup as Saturday that was in his primary car, but zero laps on this race car this weekend. Mark is trying to settle in, currently running in the 34th position, has made zero comments on the radio. The game plan early, we just try to feel out this race car to give him a top 10 finish here in the spring. And just because... You have to realize just because you put the exact same setup in your backup car doesn't mean that car is going to feel anything like the one that you wreck. These cars all have a feel or drivers are looking for feel. That's why Earnhardt has run this car so many times because he likes the way that thing grips the racetrack. He likes the way it feels. It could be just a little something different in the body. But that's why Mark is probably trying to feel this thing out. I'm sure they're going to have to make some big changes when they come in for the first pit stop. Jeff Gordon in that 24 car started 23rd, has made his way to 12th. Greg Biffle's also on the move. He's gone from 39th to 27th. There's race leader Kurt Busch. Brian Vickers closing in on him. There's Junior. He's in the seventh spot. Riggs on the move behind him to eighth. We see that eight car sliding back, just like we talked about earlier, just like he was doing in Atlanta. The thing is a rocket ship. The first 10 or 15 laps, then all of a start starts to drop off. So Riggs takes the position from Earnhardt. Give you the speeds at the line here. And again, uh, top four cars here broke the track record in qualifying. And the speeds that you see is not the fastest speed, but the average speed of Tony Stewart at 178 miles per hour. So they have slowed down considerably from qualifying. Almost 20 miles an hour average speed. But still pretty darn fast <laughs> on a mile and a half track. Yes, it is. There's Junior trying to chase down a championship. Wally? Take a ride around and BP up. Actually, that second lane has worked in pretty nicely already. These guys here, watch going down the corner. Sees off the throttle. He'll start picking it up just a little bit right there. You hear he's just on the gas a little bit. As he gets off the corner, he really accelerates hard. Now, same thing. Go down the straight back stretch. Roll out of the throttle. Sometimes you touch the brake a little bit. Sometimes you don't. Depends on how your car handles here. Back hard on the throttle. Actually, his car looks like it's handling fairly decent. I see the miles per hour as he goes down in turn one. 190, 194 miles per hour. He goes down to about 156, 7,400 RPMs in the middle of the corner. And that's what the engine builder doesn't want to even look at, does no. it? And, and it's not only so much what your top RPM is, like DP says, it, it doesn't drop that much. I mean, it goes to 7,400, 7,500 RPM. So you're in that high RPM range all the time. Earnhardt third at Atlanta. That was his best finish and second at California seven races ago. Scott. That 10 car is yes. going somewhere. He is, Benny, and that's going to the front. And that's not a surprise to this race team. I talked to Rodney Childers, the crew chief of Scott Briggs, yesterday. They finished seventh here back in April. Thought they had a car that could have won that day, but made a lot of mistakes on their pit stops, and it kept them from being at the front of the pack. Rodney says their pit crew has come a long way since then, and they feel they have just as good a car. Maybe today will be the day Scott Briggs gets win number one here in the next L Cup Series. The way he's looking now wouldn't surprise me, huh, BP? No, it wouldn't, Alan. 
I talked to Rodney this morning and he's very optimistic because he didn't say much. That tells me the crew chiefs are very optimistic about winning when they don't say much. They don't want to jinx anything. Exactly. Robbie Gordon goes up high in the seven. Earnhardt's going to try and scoot underneath him here. Across the start finish line, shoot off into one. On board with Earnhardt. I always got that car down low. Be interesting to watch that develop through the day if that has the same handling characteristics as last week that Wally was talking about. Kurt Busch is the race leader, then it's Brian Vickers, Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Casey Kane. Broke to Fort Worth, and even the morning rain couldn't keep these fans away. They've come out to see the stars of NASCAR compete in race number eight in the chase for the 2006 Nextel Cup. Kurt Busch is the race leader. Tony Stewart has moved into second time for our singular race talk question. Terry Labonte's last race is today. Retiring after this race. So what is your favorite Terry Labonte moment? The vote text the word race to 191 on your singular wireless phone. You'll have a chance to win a first class trip to Miami. Told you Tony had gotten to second. Trying to get to first going around Terry Labonte right there in the 44. Kurt Busch in the two is the race leader. Tony trying to take that position away. Uh, he would have been there if it wasn't for the 44 car of Terry Labonte. He kind of got jammed in there. Tony Stewart, whoa, a little loose right there from Stewart. Gets the car a little bit sideways. Not sure if he got the left front down on that apron a little bit there. Stewart's car is working really, really good through the center and off the corner. <laughs> He may not have a chance to get this lead. NASCAR has talked about putting out a competition caution around lap 40. We've just completed lap 40, and the caution is now out on the speedway. So a competition caution here at lap 40. The first four laps of this race were run under the yellow to help dry the track. Indeed, it's sort of livable. It's about twice as loose getting off, real loose getting off the corner. Mackenzie back in 30th after starting 36th. And, and one thing, BP, you can't live with here is, is a loose race car, whether it's getting into the corner especially. But if you're loose getting in, you're going to be loose everywhere else. And going in three where it will affect you probably more than going in turn one. Alan? Well, this is a big break for Matt Kenseth, Bill, because at the rate the leaders were going out ahead of the pack, he was in danger of getting put a lap down. If this caution did not come out, maybe in another 20 laps or so, right about the time the first set of pit stops might have come up, Matt Kenseth was in jeopardy of being lapped by the leaders. So I look at this yellow as being a good break for this team, plus the fact they get to work on the race car. Yeah, huge opportunity. I'll tell you, another guy that was in big trouble was Mark Martin in that six car. Yeah, because he was five or six positions behind Matt Kenseth. I want to point out that Kenseth did qualify 36th and then started 34th because two drivers dropped to the rear of the field. And NASCAR has told the drivers they want the cars to come in slow because of the damp conditions at the entrance of Pit Road. Pit Road speed, 45 miles per hour. Pace car speed, 55. I don't know that these drivers will adhere to that. No. Exactly right. <laughs> because if somebody slows down, they got a chance to pick up a position. They're going to try their best to get it. Good road's going to be a busy place. We've got 40 cars on the lead lap. Jimmy Johnson headed for AB. In the first pit stall off the racetrack, going to be a four tire change, also going to be a chassis adjustment, going to do a wedge adjustment on this car. Jimmy said that the car getting a little snug at the end of that run. Kurt Busch pits from the race lead. He will be about seven, eight spots farther down pit road. A four tire change on Kurt Busch's car, and they'll make a track bar adjustment. Matt? Chassis adjustment already completed for Tony Stewart. He said that the car just didn't have the feel in the back that he needed. It was also just a tick free on late exit. Nate? Bottom of the screen, Brian Vickers just lost a couple of positions really not unhappy with the car. No chassis changes for Brian. They'll make a four tire change. Marty. Casey Keene said his car was pretty close, but a little too tight for his liking. Half pound on left front tire, half around up on the track bar, trying to free that nine car up just a bit, Bill. Wow, Kurt Busch lost a number of positions in that ballet down there on pit road. And had trouble with the right front. I think he had a lug nut. I saw the NASCAR official 
They're telling me they got to go back to the right front. I think they had to go back over and tighten the lug nut. We saw the Nextel race off of Pit Road. Nextel celebrating speed, teamwork, and getting things done instantly. Under caution here at Texas, a little crew cam action, Mr. Parsons. Lance Hanna from Fort Worth. Throws on the right rear, hangs it for Dave Smith, makes a chassis adjustment, runs around the other side, grabs the left rear, hangs it on there for Dave. Go! Daryl, is it really all about the fans? Coming to get the green quickly inside the NBC pit window. Let's talk about the pit stop for Kurt Busch. Jay Hackney, the front tire changer. Dave Letow hangs a tire. But the NASCAR official says, wait a minute, wait a minute, you got a lug nut off. Now Dave comes back around, picks up a lug nut off pit road, and, tight, and he says it to the tire changer, come on back, tighten this thing up, which he did. It took 20.8 seconds for that pit stop. Didn't have to do that. All he had to do was thread that thing on by hand and get out of the way and go. Kurt went in the race leader, restarts 11th. I'm sure Kurt appreciates it that he did hit it with the air gun, but... Yeah, because yesterday you were complaining because they didn't tighten it. In the Bush race, you drivers. Can't have whatever happened. <laughs> Robbie Gordon, that seventh car is sixth. Michael Waltrip is one lap down. And check who's fifth. Jeff Gordon in that 24 car has worked his way up right behind his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Kane gets 25 of Vickers, a little bit loose off of two. And he's going to take that spot. Kane to second. Vickers could not get down in time because Jimmy Johnson was already there underneath him. And now he's going to lose a couple more spots because that's the problem. On these restarts, the way this track is right now, if you get slid up to the high side, everybody's lined up on the bottom. You're going to lose three or four spots. Three Hendrick cars running together. The 48 of Johnson, the 24 of Gordon, 25 of Vickers. And I guess that will make Rick about as nervous as anything, <laughs> seeing those three cars running side by side. The only thing would make him more nervous if it was the last lap and they were running that way. Robbie gets the position, so Vickers is falling back. There's Earnhardt in behind Vickers for the moment. Sounded like Earnhardt had to get out of the throttle. He had a lot of momentum there, and he had to get out of the throttle. Gave a spot. Dave, you got something on Robbie Gordon? Yep, just a slight improvement to that race car, just a slight air pressure adjustment, a little air pressure in the left rear to help that car turn a little bit. His only complaint was that it was just a slight bit tight in that last run. That's about perfect here. <laughs> I mean, that's what you're looking for. Gives you, makes you feel a little more confident, comfortable. Well, if it's going to be something, you want it to be a little bit tight. And, um, you know, you can really control that with the way you're, you work the throttle. The car's loose by itself, and you see the 25 again gets loosened up by someone, Dale Earnhardt Jr. this time. If a car's loose by itself, and then some something like that happens where a car gets behind you, Tough to drive that way on this racetrack. 41 cars on the lead lap. Terry Labonte was the lucky dog. Update from Pit Road, here's Allen. Uh, let's talk about Matt Kenseth, Bill, way back in the field. 29th spot right now, the championship leader starting the day. This was the communication from Matt to his crew chief, Robbie Reiser, just before the pit stop, trying to describe what his car is doing in the opening run of the race. Kind of loose come again, man. It's sort of livable. It's about twice as loose getting off. Real loose getting off the corner. And don't turn it in the middle. I need some grip desperately. Uh, I probably need to fix the, the loose a little bit more than the tight. Uh, you know, if I slow way down and keep it on the bottom, you know, I can make it spin more than push, but the, the, don't follow the front tires either, you know what I mean? So Matt, with a very descriptive uh, monologue there to uh, his crew chief, what they did to counter that, if you're one of the people that likes the technical side of racing, they dropped the air pressure on both the right side tires and adjusted the cross weight in the car. And uh, we'll race a few laps and see how it works out. I'm glad Robbie understood it because I didn't understand a word he said. <laughs> well, they're both from Wisconsin and they know each other fairly well. Came in with a championship lead. Here's a guy that's had a few tough weeks, the six of Mark Martin, Matt. And Bill, it seems like he continues to take a turn for the worst for Mark Martin. Two spots back of his teammate, 
Uh, Matt Kenseth running in the 32nd position now before the competition caution. Mark came on the radio and said, we are not in good shape. The car is loose and tight. Now, they made an air pressure change on this sixth car, and while they touched on it, you know, we, we've seen some bad weeks for Mark Martin. They've wrecked a lot of their newer trick stuff. This is more of an older style race car. It's a good car, but they're still paying the price for the rough weeks they've had here in the chase. And once you get behind, it is hard to catch up at the shop. And those guys work hard at it. Kurt Busch is in the ninth spot, picked up a couple of positions. Briggs is 10th. Clint Boyer in the 0 7, 11th. Chaser Denny Hamlin is right behind them in 12th. Got four chasers right now running in the top five. Kyle Busch right in, right in front of his brother, Kyle in the five. Riggs looking at the outside. You get such a good run off the corners when you run on the high side. You'll see Scott up on the high side. Now, normally this is where the guy on the bottom will pull away. But the 10 should take the spot here now because he was a little bit ahead of Kurt Busch off the corner. Nope. Busch comes back. Kurt's probably pretty inspired after that pit stop. Yeah. Looks like that two car is has a little horsepower. Yes, it does. It can, for, in order to come off the corner on the low side behind a guy and pull up even going into the next corner is horsepower. Exactly. <laughs> Chasers, five of them running in the top eight spots. Tony Stewart said he wanted to win them all in the chase. One, two so far, and he's out front here at Texas. Destination, eight miles. Getting gas, be there in 10. OK. Where are you headed? Uh, the processing plant. Need directions? Uh, no thanks, I've got Nextel GPS. What'd you call me? What? No, this is a turn-by-turn -turn directions. We give the directions around here. Texas Motor Speedway accommodates about 200,000 fans. A lot of them came out despite the weather today, placed nearly full here in Fort Worth. Tony Stewart, six top tens in his nine races at Texas. His best finish, third this past April, was sixth in this race a year ago. Let's take you through the field, starting with Tony Stewart and Mr. Yoke. Bill, Texas has been very good for Tony Stewart in 2006. He won the IROC race in the spring, finished second Saturday in the NASCAR Bush Series race. And he's trying to make a back-to-back -back next to a cup wins. They bought the same race car. They won with that Atlanta, and it looks like it's showing the same results right now. He is out front, Marty. Meantime, his good friend Casey Kane is right behind him in second place. They are giving him Tony's lap times. And we talked about before the race about Casey finishing 38th last week, causing that accident that he feels took them out of championship contention. Midweek, Ray Abraham had a conversation with Casey, and here's what he said. Don't be so hard on yourself, uh, that kind of stuff. But it's the way it is. I mean, you want to be hard on yourself. You have to be. There's, uh, there's just not a lot of room for mistakes, not a lot of... Uh, room for any of that and you know it happened and we came to went on and now we're at Texas and hopefully we can have a good run here. His biggest issue now handling wise on the racetrack here at Texas is the car's a little bit tight but his biggest problem is his shoe is sticking to the throttle of trying to figure out how they can make that not happen anymore. Alan? <laughs> Doesn't sound like fun at these kind of speeds. Jimmy Johnson running third. That's where he was in the first run of the race. One thing they did on that pit stop that I did not mention when they actually did the stop they added a little piece of tape to the nose of the car trying to get a little added downforce in the cooler temperatures today allowed them to do that. Marty. Alan Dillenhart Jr. has been battling the flu for most of the week. Today, he's on that day where you're over it, but you're still a little achy and sore, so Jr. feeling certainly a little bit better. He's currently in fourth on the run before this, when they're a little too tight. They put a half pound in the left front tire. He said the exit, right where he is right now, is much better, a little too loose getting into the corner, though. Matt? Marty, four-time champ Jeff Gordon runs in the fifth position. 75 career wins, an impressive raising resume. He's gone to victory lane just about every place except Texas. Texas, Phoenix, and Homestead. He's not bothered by it. In fact, he's more motivated by it. I want to win a race, and there's three of them left that I haven't won a race at before, uh, and, I, and I hope that we can accomplish that, and I feel like we can. You know, I think that we're very capable. Right now, with the way this team is operating, man, I, I feel, you know, great about a lot of places that we go to, more some than others, feel like our program is really strong. 
um, you know, I almost feel better about Texas right now than I do about Phoenix, and, and I feel like we're even going to be a lot better at Phoenix than we were the last time. Jeff Gordon wanted to go by the plan of let's see what happens. Didn't make any adjustments. Now he feels like he's paying the prices of the car. is just terribly loose on exit. A.B.? Scott Riggs running in the sixth position. He picked up six spots in the opening run of the race and has maintained that at this point in the event. They made an air pressure adjustment on this car. Riggs feeling like they were in for a good afternoon the way his car was in practice. Dave? Alan, uh, Kyle Busch's first race here was in 2005, but he tried to make the race in 2004 and crash a car doing so. He's been trying to rebound at this place ever since. The team calls it a weak track for them, but Kyle's doing very well, and since the restart has been moving forward. Alan, back to you. Well, here's a guy that's really been moving in the first part of the race, and that's Martin Truex Jr. He took the green flag in 34th position. He picked up so many spots in that opening run of the race that after the pit stop, I had to come down and ask his crew and make sure they took four tires on their stop. They did. The one car is flying. Dave? Robbie Gordon qualified ninth this weekend. This is a very, very fast racetrack. In fact, he said, I could have done a little bit better if I could have held my breath a little bit longer. That's the way these guys qualify. And believe me, racing for 500 miles here is no picnic either. The 25 car of Brian Vickers is loose and not getting any better. That's the latest report from his pit. That's why he got passed at the restart. He's moved all the way back from second to 10. The 99 car of Carl Edwards is having an unusual vibration. We've been trying to track it, but so far, Carl says it's kind of an all over thing. It may just be the set of tires they have right now isn't cooperating for their setup. We'll keep an eye on that, Alan. Well, you saw the pit stop problem that dropped Kurt Busch from the race lead on that first stop. The lug nut that fell off. That dropped him back to 11th. But after gaining a couple of spots in the opening few laps of this run, he's actually slipped back now to 12th position. They will continue to work on the handling of this car. Kurt knew his car would be better out in front with clean air. Doesn't have that now. Buddy? Alan Clint Boyer couldn't wait to get to Texas because he was excited to drive this race car. It debuted at Indy and finished fourth. He took it to California. It finished third. Then he went to Kansas, was leading his hometown race, and he wrecked the car. Since then, he said the car has been in intensive care. They had to put a new rear clip on it, a new right side on it, but it's back and better than ever, currently in the 13th position, Matt. Over 10 lengths, car lengths back is the 11 of Denny Hamlin started today six. So the car was comfortable and consistent during final practice, but the change in the weather, now he says the car is really tight on exit. They made a track bar, an air pressure adjustment. The car just does not seem to have the speed currently running in the 14th spot, Dave. Matt, since the restart, David Gilliland hasn't moved forward. He hasn't moved backwards. This is only his 13th next Hell Cup Series start, and earlier this week, he told the media, I've never struggled before like this ever in a race car, but I've never been in such a competitive racing series either. The rookie doing very well. Jeff Burton not happy with his race car right now. It wouldn't turn well before he came in for the pit stop. They adjusted. It still won't turn well, and since the restart, he is now in the 16th position. He restarted 18th. He's moved forward, but it's not the way he likes it, Matt. Saturday's Bush winner, Kevin Harvin, looking for his third Bush next to a cup sweep, sweep of the 2006 season, but they've got a lot of work to do. Harvin complaining about the car being extremely tight. They made some significant changes on their stop, pulled the spring rubber, and a chassis adjustment has not seemed to help, Alan. Well, things appearing to be uh, moving forward for Matt Kenseth. He has moved up by seven spots since the restart, starting 29th. He's up to 22nd place now. Adjustments on that stop and an adjustment where he's driving on the racetrack. See, Kenseth starting to use the higher line, and it appears to be agreeing with his car a little more. Matt? It is just a handful for Mark Martin in the six. Remember, driving the backup car, he told his crew chief, Pat Trison, this thing is just so hard to drive. The car loose and tight. Mark says we need to take a big swing at it, big chassis adjustments when they hit pit road the next time. Thank you, gentlemen. That was a top 17 through the field, plus the Chasers. Greg Biffle is 18th. Casey Mears, 19th. Reed Sorensen runs 20th. There are 40 cars currently running on the lead lap. Now 39 as Tony Stewart knocks Ryan Newman one lap down. Stewart has led 34 laps so far today. Going for back-to-back -back wins. Has run well here at Texas. One last week at Atlanta. Trying to get back to victory lane and maybe climb another fence. Heroes is the hit of the new season. Tomorrow night, there's an all-new episode. Check it out yourself. Heroes tomorrow night at 9, 8 central on NBC. And right behind that, Studio 60 tomorrow night. Big night of TV on NBC.
Here's your race leader, Tony Stewart, about to put Dale Jarrett a lap down. And there have been some close calls on the racetrack. Brian Vickers had one. Too close. Coming off turn four. He goes up and just, just brushes the wall ever so slightly. This is on board with Denny Hamlin, one of our chasers. This wall rear, right here will jump out at you when you're getting off the corner. I mean, you get off the corner, you're on the bottom, you look up, you go, I got plenty of room. The next thing you know it, it's in the passenger side window. <laughs> it comes at you fast. Kind of like you were doing in Wally's world. Yeah. Your guest. BP, you busy? My favorite part of the show. Down in the trunk, please cue the duck. It means it's time for the Aflac trivia Aflac. question. Who is the only rookie of the year candidate to win a Texas Nextel Cup race? Carl Edwards. Dale Jr. Dale, Dale Jr. Oh, okay. Boy, everybody ought to know that, BP. Got his first win here back in 2000. That was some celebration. <laughs> I think that was just his 12th start, our Aflac trivia question. On board with Junior, runs in the fourth spot. Stewart leads, then there are Chasers, Kane, Johnson, and Earnhardt Jr. Riggs is fifth. Then it's Martin Truex, and then this is seventh. Jeff Gordon, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards. Robbie Gordon round out the top 10. And Carl Edwards has picked his way through the field. As much success as Matt Kenseth is having on the top groove around the racetrack, you kind of expected the other Roush cars to move up there, but he's the only one I've seen up there, the 17 car. And right. Jeff Gordon, when they restarted the race, was right, was running fifth right with those fellows, but I see he has fallen back about 11 seconds behind Tony Stewart. Update on Carl Edwards from Mr. Burns. And running in the top 10 is good news for him, Bill. He restarted 14th, and so he's past five cars uh, by the math that I did there. That's good news because yesterday he had to make a very early pit stop in the Bush Series race and was never able to recover and really get back up into the into the front running group because of track position. Uh, his car wouldn't handle. Now these cars are set up differently, but at the same time, it's tough to pass when you're in a pack of cars, and today the 99 can do it. There's Tony Stewart, the race leader, and look who's right behind him, Mark Martin. And that is not the second place car. Mark is 35th and now one lap down. Lost a car here yesterday in practice, involved in a crash with Tony Raines. So the, when they threw the green flag for today's event, that was his first lap on the racetrack with this car. Right front tire. Jeff Burton. The man who just a couple of weeks ago was leading the championship standings. Yeah, you could hear what happened before he hit the wall on that one. I believe a right front tire blew on that car. Yeah, I heard it go explode. BP, you were talking to these guys in the garage. There was some concern about right fronts here? A lot of concern with right front tires. Friday night in the truck series, had a couple of guys, Rick Crawford and Dennis Setzer, blew right front tires going down to turn one. But these guys were working very hard to keep that right front as cool as possible. Running hoses to the right front, running blowers to try to blow some cool air on them. Because they're running so much camber. Well, they're, running, they're not running a lot of camber, they're running positive camber, but the car is so soft, when it goes down, it sucks that right front tire in so much. And you gotta really be, it's a fine line between having it sucked in too far. Right. Dave? And Bill, Jeff had just radioed into his crew, how many laps till we need to stop? And when they discussed the number 20, Jeff said, we'll never make it. You gotta believe he was referring to the right front tire. This is heartbreaking for Jeff Burton. Fought all year, worked his way into the chase, won at Dover, took over the championship lead. Now, inside of three races to go, headed for the garage after this hit. And that, you know what, if you're gonna blow a tire on a racetrack this fast, this is the best place to blow a tire. I mean, he just glazed off the wall. If he would have blown that tire going into turn one or turn three, he would have hit a ton. They wouldn't have worried about fixing that car. They'd have just thrown it away. Allen, four tire stop, track bar, air pressure adjustments for Jimmy Johnson, bottom left frame, looking for a little help with the rear grip on this car. He's in the first pit stall on pit road and already gone, Matt. Tony Stewart said the car was a little free 
when it started, if it took about 15 laps to come in, he said, let's put them on them, boys. That's exactly what he did. A great stop by the Home Depot guys. 14.1, Marty. Casey Gaines in the middle of your screen, Matt, a little bit slower. Stop 15.1 for him. Up half around on the track bar. He said the car was just a little bit too tight, but he couldn't stand to be any tighter in the front end. So up a half around on the track bar, Bill. Thank you, gentlemen. You heard the roar. Tony Stewart won the race off of pit road, but Junior picks up a couple of spots and gets to second. Jeff Burton may be seeing his championship hopes go up in flames here at Texas. We're under caution. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Still under caution here at the Texas Motor Speedway, the Dickies 500. Here's our Craftsman Pit summary. Tony Stewart maintaining first. Casey Kane lost a couple of spots. Jimmy Johnson in third and out third. Our Craftsman Pit summary. Not on there, Dale Earnhardt Jr. who came out second, Matt. And a hard hit for Jeff Burton. And you were just getting re ready to tell the team what? I actually just asked Scott, I said, how far to the pit? And he said, 20 laps. And I said, it'll never go that far. And then it, it blew out. And I was uh, getting ready to tell him we're coming next lap. Um, as soon as we put that set on, it, it uh, never felt right. That's the longest right front A-frame and the least camera we run all year long. It's not in the, you can actually see the, the wear indicators was just wore on the outside as well as the inside. So uh, I don't think there's anything we did wrong. I think we just, uh, we got the lucky tire. 84 markers out coming in, which was still doable, but this is going to be a huge hit, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, this pretty much does it for us, unfortunately. But you know, we'll uh, we'll keep fighting and uh, get all we can. You never know what's going to happen. We won't uh, we won't quit we won't quit racing. I can assure you of that. But this uh, this makes it I don't say impossible, but pretty close to it. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff Burton. Well, I am delighted to hear that it wasn't a situation with Camber that it just he ran over something or whatever, and the tire blew out. OK, a couple of things here. Mark Martin was the lucky dog, so he gets to come around back on the lead lap. He's 32nd. Denny Hamlin, who was running in the 14th spot, penalized for removing equipment from his pit stall. We were told it was a wedge wrench and perhaps even the fuel can. But anyway, he's at the tail end of the longest line. He took everything. Uh, Elliot Sadler pitting outside the box. That's a one lap penalty. So Elliot Sadler is back in 34th. It's Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, and Jeff Gordon, the top five. Then it's Martin Truex Jr., Riggs, Boyer, Edwards, Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch runs in 13th. Matt Kenseth, 22nd. Denny Hamlin, 32nd. Mark Martin, 33rd. Jeff Burton currently scored 43rd back in the garage. Our 10 drivers in the chase for the next Tell Cup. Update from Marty. Bill, how about the stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his guys? 11.9, gained two spots on pit road. Jr. still not feeling well. Asked the crew under caution to see if they could maybe get him some medication or something. He said his biggest problem, he's got a whole bunch of heartburn. He said, I've drank so much Gatorade all weekend long trying to keep myself hydrated that it's now giving me heartburn, and I'm dealing with that in the race car, plus being sore from having the flu all week. But that pit stop will make him feel a that little bit better. That pit stop makes everybody feel better on the 18, Bill. And if he can get around Tony Stewart, Five bonus points for leading a lap will make him feel even a little bit better. Green flag. Man, look at Tony Stewart in that 20 car just drive away from him. Junior and Johnson trying to clear the lap traffic. Truex goes to the bottom. <laughs> Saw Ward Burton in the four car slid up to the high side, which is where all the guys on the lead lap were. So Truex decided, I need to get to the bottom to get around him. BP, you want to say something about Martin Truex Jr. and how his day's going? No, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> last week, I bragged on him and I told him how well he was doing and how well he had been running for the last couple of months. And two laps later, he's coming down pit road with the right front wheel bearing. Bad. Did you see those guys in the garage this morning? I saw Bono and I, I just walked up and he looked at me and smiled. That's all he could do. <laughs> Truex in the sixth spot. There's Casey Kane and Jeff Gordon. That's for fourth. Jeff trying the inside of the nine car. 
Tries to get down and hug that line. Well, that, that works on a lot of guys, but that's tough on Casey Kane when he's out there. <laughs> he usually hangs pretty tough. Marty. Wally, Casey has an interesting dilemma. You know, a lot of times when drivers are out here and their shoes get wet, you need to dry them thoroughly. Well, Casey didn't do that. And so his shoe is actually sticking to the throttle. So when he comes to pit road, that makes things kind of hard. They thought about handing him a can of either brake cleaner or silicone. They decided not to do that because they thought that might make it too slick. So Casey's got that issue with the shoe sticking to the throttle. Other than that, the car's running great, Matt. Marty, the biggest issue for Jeff Gordon just cannot seem to get in the power when he wants to on exit. It's really bad down in turns one and two. The traffic wasn't an issue earlier, but it sure seems like it now, he says. A.B.? Uh, just uh, keep an eye on Matt Kenseth here for a second. Uh, he had a little problem on his pit stop, and now he says he thinks he has a flat right rear tire. I so we'll keep an eye on the 17. <laughs> Problem is, he's up on the high side right now. He's not able to get slow down and get into pit lane that lap. Yeah, look with the binoculars. Bob was talking to you about, uh, Robbie. See if it's the left rear, just to make sure it's not a left rear. It's one of the rears. Left rear, it don't look like. Not a left rear. He's still trying to feel it out, make sure that's what he, what he thinks it is. He's still going pretty fast, too, feeling it out. Doesn't want to lose all those positions. See the car wiggling right there? Definitely not comfortable. It's so hard to see that right rear tire. Well, he thought it was the left rear, and Robbie Reiser said it's not the left rear. Just, what do you do? Try and tiptoe at 175 miles Exactly. An hour? You kind of get, you go to three quarter, and you try to feel it out to make sure that you're convinced yourself that there's something wrong with that car. The last thing a guy wants to do is come in and be wrong. Right. Because you basically handed the race away. So right now he's just, he's still flying, but he backed off enough to try to get a good feel for it. If he feels like, well, maybe, maybe it's not a tire going down, he'll get confidence back in the car and start picking it up again. But at this point in time, he, he's still trying to feel it out. Whoa. We're going to know pretty soon if one of those tires yeah. is going flat. Kenseth has dropped to 29th in the running order. It's back there with Hamlin, Stremi, and Mark Martin. Carl Edwards and Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch getting down on the bottom of Carl Edwards, but gets a good bite on the middle off. And Watching uh, Carl today, Dave. Yeah, and he lost some spots on pit road, had a little trouble getting out of his pit box. David Gilliland had pitted late and right in front of him, so they spoke to the 38 team and think they might have that worked out for the future, but Carl trying to make up some ground again in the 99. Matt Kenseth has lost another spot, falling back to 30th. There's the race leader. Tony Stewart leads by two, second over, two seconds over Dale Earnhardt Jr. You're watching the Dickies 500 live on NBC. Wow, I can't believe you're... Stell Cup Racing from the Texas Motor Speedway is brought to you by Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. By CarQuest Auto Parts, the professional choice. By the new Gillette Fusion, the best shave ever in manual and battery power. By the Home Depot's Home Improvement Week, November 2nd through the 8th. Go to 7 projects 7 dayscom for details. And by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's forward. Toyota. Moving forward. Tony Stewart's got a project on his hand, trying to hammer together back-to-back -to -back wins. And yeah, notice he moved up the racetrack, BP, about the last three or four laps. He's been trying a different line. I don't know if he's getting some uh, advice or if his spotters are saying, hey, a lot of these guys are running up top, give it a shot. But he moved up there, and he's still the fastest car on the racetrack. Yeah, he's about a tenth of a second faster than anyone else. And he's like running qualifying laps. There's nobody around him. Matt? Bill, he's just searching to see if he can make that already great race car even better. And he was also searching for some information about five laps ago. He asked Zippy, he goes, hey, by the way, do you have a football score for me? He says, yes, to Coach one. He goes, I, I didn't hear you. Can you come back? He goes, yep, Coach Gibbs won. They kicked the field goal to win. He goes, well, good. That means the boss man will be happy next week. <laughs> 
Now we showed you Brian Vickers has had his hands full on a couple of occasions today. I want to we're about to show you one of the coolest saves we've seen all year. There he is on the bottom. He gets sideways right here and he stays sideways forever. Now this is all at 180 170 miles per hour. That was a beautiful <laughs> save. I agree that was. He finally gets it straightened out about halfway down the back straight. Dave and his comments were holy cow. I was looking out the right side window. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good thing Dave. No uh, unless you do that in Wally's world though don't you. I did that the once. passengers always look out the, out the right side window. I've forgotten about how you had your hands full here on that thing a year ago. Oh, Six spot here. There. Clint Boyer takes a spot away for now. Now Mitchell True actually it. loses the spot. Yep. You can say something about Boyer winning the truck race here <laughs> if you want. Went with the victory lane on Friday. This is for second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has it. Jimmy Johnson's going to try and take it away. Guys, about four seconds behind race leader Tony Stewart. They, might, they must have uh, adjusted on Junior's car quite a bit because he's been a lot better now on the longer runs. You know, and and these guys have switched everything we know about them. I mean, Jimmy Johnson usually runs on the very bottom of the racetrack down next to the white line, and Junior runs on top. It's reversed today. <laughs> What's going on in the world? Johnson trying to take the position. This is for second behind Tony Stewart. Jimmy's got it for now. Well, I'll tell you, for the last three weeks, everything has been going Jimmy Johnson's way. He knows that he's got Big Mo on his side. I do feel the momentum gaining. Um, we've we've had the speed, we just haven't had the finishes. And then a lot of crazy things have gone on in this chase that we've all watched and witnessed. And now there's you know five, six, seven car shootout for the championship with three to go. So uh, you know I'm glad to be in this position. That's all you can ask for. And I'm very thankful for my Lowe's team put me in this position every year I've been in the sport. So I feel very lucky and at the same time very hungry to try to win a championship. You know Jimmy Johnson talked about when he got here at Texas this weekend that earlier this week he had a dream about being a champion. He said in past years he used to dream about all the things that could go wrong in trying to win this championship. This year he says everything is positive and he's looking good in this race so far. Marty. Well Allen since battling uh, Jimmy Johnson for second Dale Earnhardt Jr. has fallen back to fourth. I was waiting to see if Casey Gain had gotten around him. They talked to him BP exactly to what you're talking about. They said the other fast cars are running about a lane higher than you are. Junior came back on the radio said I know they are. I can't run up there. I know they're faster than me. If I could run up there I would. And now you see Junior try it. He's going to try in the high line but he's been stuck on that bottom all day long. BP you're exactly right. Well, you got to go sometimes where the car tells you to go. And you saw Stewart. Well, I think Stewart was probably searching because he's right. bored. <laughs> but uh, these other guys are looking for some grip. Bored at 180 miles per hour. Hey, guess what? Sun's coming out at the Texas Motor Speedway. Right now, it's shining on Tony Stewart in the Dickies 500. If you. Here's today's Wrangler's five-star finish. All centers around Terry Labonte. On September 19th, the Texas Motor Speedway unveiled Texas Terry's new paint scheme for Terry's final race today. Some members of the Dallas Cowboys got the chance to meet Terry, and in return, he gave him a ride around the Texas Motor Speedway. Our Wrangler five-star finish. Last finish for Terry Labonte in his NASCAR Nextel Cup career. Not having the kind of day he was hoping for, Tony Stewart just put him two laps down. Matt. Bill, he's been fighting a loose condition all day. They've tried several adjustments, just hasn't been able to tighten up Terry's 44 car in his final ride. And Rick Hendrick pulled me aside when he was up at the front of the grid as a battle for second going on between the 8 and the 48. He said, I gave Terry a die cast joking around to the car is yours. They said, no, seriously, your final car is yours. And then he kind of went and said, I pity the fool if anybody puts even a tire mark on that race car because that 44 is headed to Terry's own museum. Wow. Very generous. This is Earnhardt in second. Jimmy Johnson in third. They're behind Tony Stewart. They're 5.3 seconds behind the 20 car. 
talking about Terry Labonte. Let's take a look at the results from our singular race talk question. Terry oh, I should have known. <laughs> this one involved Earnhardt Sr. Yep. And there was another memorable moment when Earnhardt won. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Involving Terry Labonte. Yes. <laughs> okay. There's Matt Kenseth in that 17 car. How's their day going now, Alan? Well, the tension level's a little less down here than it was a couple <laughs> minutes ago, and Matt thought he had a flat right to retire. He has running, not he has not pitted yet. He had fallen back as far as 30th place, Bill. He's moved back up now to 21st. He just called in on the radio about a lap and a half ago and told Robbie Reiser that his car feels weird. He said it feels like it's leaning over on the right rear tire, and yet he's got more steering wheel input into it to the left, even down the straightaway, than he normally has. So, Wally, Benny, that's... Oh. That, that's weird, is what I said. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Something that happened. weird. So, something happened down there? Uh, a little technical glitch, <laughs> I think, on my part. Kenseth, as Alan said, in the 21st position, 23.6 seconds behind that man. Tony Stewart, the race leader. He's got a five-second lead over Dale Earnhardt, Jr. Back in the garage, they continue to work on the car of Jeff Burton, currently scored 43rd. He is 42 laps down. They've been back there a while, trying to get their man back out on the track and keep his chase hopes alive. Caution has just come out here at the Texas Motor Speedway for debris on the front stretch. I cannot tell what that is. Neither can I. But the caution is out. NBCSports.com's Tom Curran looks at how the Colts Patriots rivalry got so nasty. Check it out on NBCSports.com. And they'll continue some of that nastiness tonight. Tony Stewart is the race leader. Then it's Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer, and Casey Kane. The Bush Series ran here yesterday. Kevin Harvick went to victory lane again. And you know they said the setup on that car that he won so handily with yesterday yeah. was exactly the same as today's car. And right now he's currently running eighth under caution. Pit Road be a very busy place. That caution helps out Mark Martin a little bit. It saved him from going a lap down, but he's still got his hands full, doesn't he? I don't think Mark sees it as much <laughs> help today. Well, maybe Pat Trison and the boys can make it a little bit better. Elliott Sadler in the 19 car is the lucky dog. He'll come around, be the 34th car running on the lead lap. Pit Road will be open this time. There you see Tony Stewart in that orange 20 car, going to lead a big parade to their pit stalls. Well, I'm guessing Alan Bestwick will be first with that 48 car. And it will be a four-tire change for Jimmy Johnson. They're also going to make a small adjustment to the track bar on this car. You see the wrench going into the hole in the right rear of the windshield. Jimmy looking for help with front end grip in the turns. That, at the top of your screen, the guy who's led 93 laps so far, Tony Stewart, says, I just need a tiny bit of help getting back into the throttle. Other than that, the car is almost perfect. Marty? Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the middle of your screen says his car is a little bit loose when he's by himself. It's actually better in traffic. That's how he was able to work traffic so well. Their bigger concern is his health. More to come on that in a minute, Bill. Thank you, Marty. Whoa. Congestion there off of pit road. And a little bit more right there. Robbie Gordon sliding in front of a couple of guys. See Matt Kenseth coming off of pit road. Once again, rear tire carrier. 38 car, David Gillen, Lance Hanna from here in Fort Worth, making another chassis adjustment on the rear panard bar. All right, left rear. Come on, David, tie them up and let's go. How you get to work. 139 laps are complete here at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. Tony Stewart is the race leader, but a story developing on the second place driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Marty. Let's talk to Tony Erie Jr. How concerned are you about Junior's health at this point? <laughs> we were always concerned about him. I mean, he's just got a lot of heartburn right now. He's been taking Gatorade and stuff so much this week, but uh, 
You know, he just he's feeling a little under the weather. He's it's shaking him up pretty bad out there just going to these speeds. But I think he'll be he'll hang in there for us and he'll take care of it. We tried to get him a bottle of water with a straw in it, but the water spilled all over him. He said he feels like he's going to get sick inside the car. He's doing the best he can, though, and he's running awfully well right now. He's in second, Bill. Yeah, maybe that'll take his mind off of it. it that's exactly what it's better to run green. You don't start thinking about it until you're under the, you know, the caution lap. So the more it goes green, the better it is for a driver. Earnhardt did lead a lap, got five bonus points, just because of the way the pit stalls are positioned on pit road. So Earnhardt did get five bonus points. Runs second here, trying to shake free of the lap traffic with Jimmy Johnson right on his bumper. But each time, Tony Stewart in that 20 car just squirts away from these guys. Yeah, get, gets a good start. He clears the guy down on the bottom, which was Newman this time. And he can get to the bottom of the racetrack and pick up four or five car lengths, a corner, on the guys that are racing side by side behind him. Junior got around Newman. Now Johnson's going to try it. Boxed in there a little bit by Jeff Green. Now you watch Junior put distance on. Jimmy Johnson, because Jimmy's hung up there racing side by side. A minute ago, he was right on Junior's bumper. Just want to point out that Sterling Marlin stayed out under the caution to get five bonus points for leading a lap, and that's significant because he's in a very tight battle with Kyle Petty for the 35th position in owner points, and that's big, especially as we look ahead to 2007. And the Daytona 500 specifically. The first five races of 2007, the top 35 in points of 2006 owner points are locked in. They don't have to, they've got to qualify for a starting position, but they will start to race. And everyone gets so concerned about the Daytona 500. Pretty important. Yeah. And Mike, because once you miss one or two of those races at the beginning of the season, that is a very, very difficult hole to dig yourself out of points wise. Point out that Michael Waltrip has retired from the race with a blown engine, currently scored 42nd. And now Elliott Sadler has gone to the garage as well. He's 41st. And Jeff Burton's car remains in the garage while the crew continues to work on that after he blew a tire and hit the front stretch wall. See Harvick and Gordon here. They're, they're just happen to be patient right now. They've got uh, guys in front of him that are a lap or more down, but they're running side by side like Ford Burton and I guess that Dale Jarrett. 66 car. Jeff Green is right there. And Harvick in that 29 looked like he struggled a little bit at the early going in this race, but now he's currently running in the fifth position. And also trying to work his way up in the championship standings. Right now, Kevin Harvick fourth in the points and trying to just not let any of that pressure build up on him or his team. This year, I really hadn't let a whole lot eat me up. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you you get caught up in in, in kind of reacting to, to some of the, you know, what we we perceive is as, um, you know, mood. I guess mood points of, of things that, that really wouldn't matter in our world that, that people make a big deal out of. So um, all in all, I, I just kind of gone with the flow this year and, and not got caught up in one week. No matter how good or how bad it's been, uh, you have to go to the next week and and uh, do the best you can. Going with the flow bill means that the fun factor has been high this year in Bush and Nextel Cup, and the pressure has been down. If Harvick can pull off the sweep as he's already up to fifth, that'll be the third Bush Cup sweep this season, and that would be a NASCAR record for most sweeps in a single season by the same driver. Harvick says the car is just can't be any freer on entry. They need to get the tightness on exit. They made an air pressure change to try to fix that. He hasn't said anything since. And something to think about. There's never been a Bush Cup sweep here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Harvick trying to do it for the first time. Hey, what, Dale Jarrett's giving Harvick fits <laughs> right there. Is. Finally moves up on the high side, and Harvick does get by him. Tony Stewart in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. by one point, oh, well, basically almost two seconds. This is Jeff Gordon in sixth, Casey Kane in seventh, Kane in that nine car. Couple of guys in the chase, but in a very desperate situation. Trying to improve their position. Oh, How about Casey that? Kane down the bottom. They go three wide. Got away with it. Ryan Newman in that 12 car, a couple of laps down. 
Marty. Casey really wanted to get around the 24 car. You see him diving underneath him again. He said that because when you get behind other cars, he said the pace is so fast here that the cars are extremely tight. So it makes it hard to get around other race cars. He said on the last stop before this one, whatever you did to the car, we lost the front end and the back end. So on this most recent stop, they undid the adjustments before that, and the car's back to where it was earlier. Matt. Gordon right down on the bottom. Now he told Steve Latardis crew chief, we've made about 30% improvements of where I need this race car to be it is still too tight significant changes again on the last stop for gordon currently running in that sixth position trying for his first texas win yeah, you're going to hear a lot about that the next couple of weeks gordon has not won here has not won at phoenix has not won at homestead permission now get a couple of victories see how it all plays out when the green flag comes out at homestead Tony Stewart out front here in the Dickies 500 at the Texas Motor Speedway. NASCAR Nextel Cup Racing from the Texas Motor Speedway is brought to you by Team Chevy. 26 of the last 35 NASCAR manufacturers championships and counting. Chevy and American Revolution. By Sony, the official high definition television of NASCAR on NBC. By the Principal Financial Group, we'll give you an edge. And by Nextel, get closer to the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series with Nextel, only from Sprint. Ooh. Rapidly closing in on the halfway mark here at the Texas Motor Speedway. But Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car, had quite a scare just a couple of laps ago. He was running in the second position. He's now back in fourth, and we heard him say, to the crew, get ready, boys, get ready. Alan, what was he talking about? Well, he slowed down the racetrack, Benny, and then he said, I got it, I got it. They're thinking, I just uh, I just mouthed to Chad Knauss, ignition box, did he switch ignition boxes? And he looked at me and shook his head, yes. So they're thinking at this point that must have been what happened, that he might have had to switch to the uh, backup ignition box inside the car, and that might have been what slowed him down for a second. But no definitive word down here quite yet. And the ignition box really is the heart of that whole setup. That's right, because it takes those 12 volts and multiplies them by about 50,000 <laughs> times, so that you got about a half a million volts going to the spark plug. And that's why that they have so much trouble with them, because they get so hot trying to come up with that kind of juice and electricity, they burn the wires up. And that's why they run two of them. Jeff Burton. Back out on the racetrack, currently scored 43rd, 67 laps down. If he stays on the track and out of trouble, he will at least pass Michael Waltrip and Elliott Sadler. Took the crew just over 42 minutes to make the repairs for that 31 car. Hit the wall along the front stretch after cutting a right front tire. Updated championship standings. And remember a couple of weeks ago, Burton was number one. Right now, Jeff back in the eighth spot. It's Casey Kane in the nine, Kevin Harvick in the 29. Kane in fifth. Harvick runs sixth. Going around the four car of Ward Burton. Track looks like it's in good uh, condition, BP. It sure does. These guys able to run the bottom of the racetrack. The outside groove is working as well. But nobody's running it as well as Tony Stewart. Leads by 4.6 seconds over Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's not feeling real well this afternoon. Yo, Chuck, where are you? I'm staring at it, man. Under caution here at Texas, we will reach the halfway mark when the field gets to the start finish line, but we're under caution because Dale Earnhardt Jr. has hit the wall. Yeah, Junior, Junior was struggling with the loose car, but what happened here is the 07 of Clint Boyer came up on him so fast, he got Junior arrow loose. Junior got the car sideways, and unfortunately, he didn't catch it before it hit the wall. Pit stops, Allen. And Jimmy Johnson is in. I'm not sure it was the ignition box that was the problem on this car. I think it might have been a problem with the window net coming down. Jimmy said he was driving one-handed, maybe holding that left side net up. Matt? 
Tony Stewart said, I need a little more adjustment than we made last time. So beside the small air pressure, Shaggy Larson, the catch cam man, made a small track bar adjustment to try to get this car just a little bit tighter. Marty? Clint Boyer's in the middle of your screen. Already gone. Another excellent stop for the 07 crew. 10.3 on the stop. They've gained spots all day on pit road. No changes to the chassis, Dave. Good pit stop for Carl Edwards. Came down pit road in the sixth position. They made a track bar adjustment down on that. His car was a little bit loose. That should help. And there you see the crew working on the Budweiser Chevy of Dale Earnhardt Jr. You guys talked about Arrow Loose before the race even yep. began. Junior, like I said, Junior has been a little bit loose anyway, but when that 07, he had such a closing rate on Dale Jr. It packed the air on, underneath, took the air off the spoiler like BP talked about in the Home Depot virtual garage, and it was the worst place on the racetrack for that to happen. It was coming off a of four where that wall comes out and wants to grab you every time on the exit of four. Watch and listen. So they work on the eight car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt Kenseth in the 17 stayed out to lead a lap. Five bonus points for Matt. Sort out the running order when we come back. Nothing stays secret for it. Just past the halfway mark at the Texas Motor Speedway. This field coming to get the green. Tony Stewart is the race leader. Clint Boyer is second. Just want to clarify that his pit stop was 13.51 seconds. Not 10.3 seconds. Right. Dale Earnhardt Jr., 34th. Last car on the lead lap. Now that 07 car of Clint Boyer has been one of the fastest cars in the last 40, 50 laps. Let's see if he can do anything with Tony Stewart because no one else has been able to. The damage? I don't, be a I, I think it happened far enough back on the fender that it's not going to affect the, the car. Okay. Guys got to look at it on pit road. Boyer clears the lap traffic. Sits out in pursuit of Tony Stewart. Kevin Harvick runs third trying to get around the lap cars. And it's Carl Edwards and Casey Kane. Matt Kenseth is 31st right now. Mark Martin is 30th. Denny Hamlin, 22nd. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. Johnson in sixth. Let's get an update on Earnhardt Jr. from Marty. Well, Bill, as you mentioned, a long way to go for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Restarted 34th. The team was extremely calm on the radio, both Junior and Tony Uri Jr. in making the repairs. Took two stops, they checked the toe to make sure the steering wheel was tracking correctly. The car is fine. They think they're gonna be okay, but they have a long way to go. They did stay on the lead lap. That's the key. Junior said, make sure you keep me on the lead lap. A couple of Hendrick cars side by side right there. The 24 of Jeff Gordon, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. Oh, Caution we got a crash. Gonna... Mark Martin off the four, Sterling Marlin in the wall. Now go low, go low. Kenny Schrader in the wreck. Ryan Newman got to the inside of it. There's Mark. There's Earnhardt. We blew a right front. We run over something. Sterling Marlin. That was Schrader. Was that uh, Fatback from Twain? Was it? Wow. Schrader. I got oil pressure. I'm driving around. It looked. Yeah. The way he hit, it looks like he had a tire problem. Wait that waffled. Well, we'll take a look at it. See what we can see. Well, he was he was headed up there. That's Schrader. Yep. Like the 22 car got a piece of that. Dave Blaney. Then they all start wrecking behind him. I mean, after a restart like that, if one guy has a problem, it's hard to get away from. Looks like Sterling might have run in the back of the six car. And there's a lot of damage to Sterling's car. I Looks guess, like Mark yeah. clipped Sterling. Yeah, and Sterling had all his damage with the outside retaining wall. See Junior down there slamming on the brakes. He's on board with Schrader. Uh, boy, that thing just takes off. So something either had a tire go down or something because that thing just took off and they normally don't do that. 
Ward Burton was the lucky dog under the previous caution. This time, Dale Jarrett, the lucky dog. And that's going to hurt Sterling. You know, we're talking about being the top 35 in points. Yep. That's not going to help. See how that shakes out as we play through the afternoon here at Texas. Schrader to the garage, working our fifth caution at the Texas Motor Speedway. NBC. This is our Ford driver profile with four victories coming into this race. Matt Kenseth has been near the top of the next Hell Cup standings throughout 2006. Six weeks, including three in the chase, Kenseth has been number one in the championship standings. The chase for the NASCAR Next Hell Cup concludes November 19th with the Ford 400 in Homestead. Matt chasing his second Next Hell Cup Series championship. And he was able to somehow get through the crash without damage. There, there he is, see him right, right behind. There. Headed straight for Sterling and the C's part, and he drives through. And Junior just kind of stops. <laughs> yeah, he actually had the front tires locked up. He was on the brake so hard. Marty? Well, Bill, this is stop number two for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said the car drives like it's wrecked. They didn't get it fixed like they thought they would. They're going to fix the left rear fender. They're also paying attention to the back bumper. They handed Jr. a little driver maintenance going on as well. Six Toms. They brought Dr. Scott McNair from Hendrick Motorsports over, trying to calm Jr.'s stomach down and trying to get this race car fixed. Alan? Matt Kenseth, who you saw just barely got through that accident. He was going, he was debating back and forth with Robbie Reiser whether or not to pit under this caution. Matt said, I only ran a couple laps. Then when a lot of cars in front of him on the lead lap did make pit stops, Robbie made a late call, said, stay out. We can pick up a couple of spots here, which they have done. And we also got the report from Pit Road that there is no damage on the 07 car of Clint Boyer, so he should be okay here running second behind Tony Stewart. Continue to work on track cleanup here at the Texas Motor Speedway. 177 laps complete. Tony Stewart leads Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards, and Jimmy Johnson in the Dickies 500. The response to the number 11 fact at Texas. Top 21 cars did not pit under this caution. Yeah, Stewart gets. I mean, it's so important to get past that guy that's a lap down. Because when he does, when he gets in a three, he's got 10 bar lengths on second place. Hendrick teammates side by side. Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon behind Carl Edwards. Looks like Jeff had the upper hand off that high groove. I promised Rick Hendrick today that I would say hello to a friend of his. Been a friend oh, of we got trouble. Oh, trouble. Sorry, BP. Yep. Jeff Gor uh, Robbie Gordon. Robbie Gordon off a two. Uh, Matt Kenseth trying to get through it. You know, and I was watching that while you guys were watching the race. <laughs> I was watching off a two. And Robbie tried squeezing a guy up on, I don't know who it was that was running up on the right side, but Robbie really kind of threaded the needle on that deal and got loose getting off a two. Rodney Wise will have to have some kind of salve on his arm tomorrow when we know these caution flags. Now, see here, he gets up in, okay, it was Biffle. And he squeezed up there and just got the car loose getting off the corner. Biffle does a real nice job avoiding that wreck. Jeff Green is the lucky dog, and I think that'll make Tony Stewart happy for his, because Green has been relatively strong on these restarts. I don't know if that's going to make him happy or unhappy because it's really He's holding up him. the other guys. Yeah. That's right. Good point. Ooh, right in front of Kenseth again. We got to give Matt an onboard camera. Yeah. Watch up high there. That camera guy never even flinched. No, those are talented people. On board with Junior. Get low, get low, get low. Lane's clear now, Jim. I like the just stop theory. As the long car... as somebody doesn't hit you from <laughs> exactly behind, that's a right. great theory. Earnhardt back in 28th. Tony Stewart, the race leader, under caution in Texas. Wouldn't it be great to hear it?
Still under caution here at the Texas Motor Speedway. 183 laps are complete. Tony Stewart is the race leader. There's Matt Kenseth. In the last two cautions, he has picked up 17 spots and hasn't passed a car. That, that, that's amazing. Guy's coming to pit road, Matt's staying out. So he's worked his way up to 17th and he just managed to tiptoe through the Robbie Gordon wreck. Watch and listen. Let's spin here, back it down, back it down. Stay right there, back it down. Come on now, come on, let's guard get you from behind. Watch this step, come high if you need to. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Just in all that smoke. That's the problem. These guys today are nailing the throttle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nailing the throttle, trying to spin these cars around to avoid hitting the wall. And they put up such a cloud of tire smoke, it's impossible to see behind them. Earnhardt Jr., the work continues, Marty. Just doing my math real quick, Bill. I believe that's the number seven stop for these guys to fix this race car. And they've topped off right here on lap 184. And they might play a little fuel strategy game here. They're also talking about maybe a two-tire stop later on. Junior said, if we do a two-tire thing, as he called it, somewhat later, I think we might have a good enough car to still finish in the top 10 today. <sighs> Dale Earnhardt Jr., too Not fast to exiting. Marty, what has he been saying? What, what's the car doing right now? Has he when, he, when he was out running earlier, Wally, he said it felt like it was driving like a wrecked race car. They've made six stops since then, though, trying to fix that race car and make it better, Bill. Thank you, sir. Five cars pitted, six including Robbie Gordon. Basically, the top 28 stayed on the track. Hey, Stewart didn't get the jump he's been getting. I mean, he's still got a pretty good jump, but not 10 car lengths like he has been. And words in Oh, oh they're going to split waffle. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, he thought better <laughs> of it. Well, that really helped out Jimmy Johnson right there. He Did not help Carl Edwards. No. My gosh, he's lost four positions. And here comes the 41 of Sorensen trying to move up on the inside as well. I mean, he can't. Looks like Travis yeah, tried to get yeah, out of his way yeah. there. Kurt Busch runs seventh, Sorensen eighth, Carl Edwards ninth, Casey Mears in the tenth spot. Here's the two Hendrick cars side by side again. What, what were you saying about Rick? Oh, I'm saying that he wanted me to say hello to a friend of his. Been a friend for about 30 years. He's the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center awaiting a liver transplant. Junior Barber. And he just wants Junior to know that he's thinking about him and loves him. How's that? Well done. Boy, Johnson. On the move there. How about the 24, Matt? Still hasn't led a lap to pick up those extra five bonus points. Jeff also says it's just been very frustrating today because the back of the car just is not anywhere close to being in the racetrack. Significant track bar adjustment. They went down two rounds. Big air pressure change on the left side as well, just trying to find some balance for this 24 car. All these crews working hard. 145 to go. Casey Kane looking back. Jeff Gordon in his rearview mirror. Then there's Kurt Busch. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is 31st right now. Had to restart at the tail end of the longest line after the speeding, exiting pit road. Gordon runs in the sixth spot. Kurt Busch trying to rope him in. Update on the two from Allen. Bill, you remember way back in the very first pit stop of this race at lap 42, Kurt Busch came in leading. They had a lug nut fall off on the right front and had to take the time to go back around and put it on. He lost 10 spots on that pit stop. And the simple act of getting put back in traffic with this race car has held them up for the entire race. Kurt has lamented that on the team radio ever since. They've been trying to adjust to compensate for it and see if they can race their way back to the front. Well, he's racing hard now, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's just had he's, he's had problems with that car around other cars. And, you know, when he gets in clean air, he can catch a car 
but when he gets to him, he struggles. And he's been fighting that since that first pit stop. Right, like uh, Alan said. Still side by side with Gordon. And watching that 41 car behind these two. Remember last year, Casey Mears driving this 41 car? At times was the class of the field here. So Jimmy Elliott Capucci found this 41 has a real good setup for this racetrack. Gordon trying to edge away from Bush. Sorensen right there now. This goes on about five seconds behind. Tony Stewart, Greg Biffle on pit road. This is unscheduled, Dave. Thinks he has a right side tire going down. Not sure which one it is. They're also going to make a wedge adjustment. The car was just really getting away from him at the restart. Restart at 14th. He was back to 20th in two laps. The Bush Gordon battle continues. Swords and watches. We're trying to hold it down there. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it seems like it was hurt, dropped back about five or six car lengths and gets right back to the 24. But then he gets right there within a car length and he can't do anything with them. It helps when Jeff Gordon runs a different line right. than he does. Oh. Paul Menard looks like an engine's problem. And the caution out. Broke a piston. Broke a piston, he thinks. They make a big mess. This will be caution number eight. We see him slowing down there, the yellow car on the inside. But. Too late. Too late. Greg Biffle is the lucky dog. He'll come around and be the 33rd car on the lead lap. I'm telling you, Stewart's bored. When you start <laughs> bump drafting the pace car, he's looking for some fun. Race car driver is Brent Bodine. Smiling. Oh, yeah, he's having a big time. NASCAR has asked Tony to back off a little bit, and he did. Is he trying to make uh, Brent loose? Is that what he's trying to do? <laughs> he loose. was trying. <laughs> it would have been done. I think he's trying to scratch the paint job. Oh, don't do that. Hey, some of those Tony Stewart fans would love to buy a Corvette. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Tony Stewart. Right. And they wouldn't fix the damage either, would they? You know, this 20 crew has held service all day. He's gone in with a lead. He comes out with a lead. Can Alan? he keep it up? On the last run of the race, Jimmy Johnson of his car said, I just can't run anybody down. Chad Canal said, we'll get you a spot on the pit stop. We'll see how it turns out. Four tire change here, Matt. Stewart left his mark on the back of the pace car team. Left a mark on pit road so far today. Good, solid stops. Says the car is zeroing in on where he needs the balance to be. Marty. Clint Boyer says this car is a little bit loose, but do not touch it. Loose means fast. And the stop that's on the pit road right now for these guys going very well. They've been excellent on pit road today. And another good stop for the 07 crew. They might get the 20, but it's going to be close. It's going to be awfully close. They can't speed. Here's the next hell race off of pit road. Kyle Busch, apparently just a two tire stop. Not sure we've heard the end of that race off of pit road, no. BP. No, we might not. NASCAR might have a say in that. Nextel celebrating speed, teamwork, and getting things done instantly. Yes, they're coming. There they are. Wow, look at that. Sort out the running order, and we come back. Out of turn four, they head toward the white flag. Ladies and gentlemen, the All-State Good Hands driver. Huh. We see Brian Vickers brush the wall off turn four, and then this incredible save. Had the car sideways for about two, three hundred yards and saved it somehow. Allstate, official insurance sponsor of NASCAR. What do you say? I was looking out the right side window. <laughs> what he told his crew. Jimmy Johnson trying to capture his first NASCAR Nextel Cup Series championship. Right now in front by nine points. Yeah, those guys are, they're sick of finishing second. Remember how his chase started in the wall at New Hampshire. 
Jamie McMurray in the 26 and Brian Vickers in the 25 did not pit. And according to my notes, they last pitted on lap 177. Kyle Busch in the five took two tires. If this isn't a wreck, BP, I'd be surprised. That very fast 20 car is Three right five. behind him in fourth. Well, I just wonder if the 25 and five didn't do this strategy to try to help Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. Just to see what it would do, what it did to the car, and what he they might do on the pit stop at 20 or 30 to go. Stewart working on it. Stewart is just flying right now. Gonna get the 25. I mean, he's gonna pass these guys almost fairly little, quickly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just a little over a lap. But I just didn't know if they had wrecked before he got to the front. He's only got McMurray left. Dave. No talk from the five bunch about helping their teammate, but Kyle Busch just wants clean air on that five car. He's been frustrated in traffic all day. They said, what the heck? Let's take a shot and get you toward the front. But, but what? Alan? <laughs> oh, I just got to tell you about the thinking in Jamie McMurray's team's pits, which is, what have they got to lose? They pitted at lap 175, yes, but remember, we haven't run a whole lot of green flag laps since then. These two runs of the race have been fairly short because we had another caution in between there. So they don't have a lot of laps on their tires. And considering where they've been running and where they started all day, we might see if we can pick up a few spots on the Jeep. So what was that butt all about? <laughs> <laughs> that butt was. I was just wondering I was, if, you know, changing the two and getting in clean air, but how long that would be good with everybody else changing four tires if it wouldn't put them back in traffic real quick. Bernsey? Well, and part of the thinking is that you have the chance to get a mid-run caution when everyone wants to come back in and you haven't lost too much, Wally. Don't you think that's yep. the game? No, that, that, if you look at it that way, absolutely. Boy, that's definitely... But that's a lot of butts. <laughs> yeah, that's a... <laughs> Actually, Kyle's running pretty good right now. I thought he would have lost three or four positions right off the uh, green flag, but he's hanging in there in second spot. Matt Kenseth in that 17 car runs 18th, Dale Earnhardt Jr. 19. Whoa. Kenseth looking a little loose. Marty. Bill, the eight-tire theme. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wanted to try. Happened on this last stop. They restarted 20th, as you mentioned. Jr. said the car is actually not too bad, a little too tight in the center of the corner. They'll probably take four here, maybe try two tires later in the race as well. They'll see, have to see how it works out on this run. Alan? The Matt Kenseth team continues to work on his car. They added a spring rubber a couple of stops back to try and help the handling, and they continue to try and chip away and get toward the front of the field. A top eight car is what they thought they had at the start of the day. Obviously, it hasn't been that way so far. Jack Roush has just come down to visit with Robbie Reiser and talk about it. This is for sixth. McMurray. Gordon. Jeff trying the inside. You see Kurt Busch just ahead of them. Kurt actually has the sixth spot. Update on Gordon from Matt. Bill, the four-time champ, Gordon, has gone back and forth between tight and loose right now. He says the car is just so free, he cannot even put any wheel into it in the corner, or he feels like the car is just going to absolutely spin out in the last stop. Air pressure change again. They also went down on the track bar just to try to tighten up this 24 car. AC Kane's going to try and take the position. Kane falls in line behind Gordon. McMurray holding his own for now. After not pitting under the most recent caution. Gordon working real hard to try and get by him. Now Gordon and Kane clear the 26. Casey and Gordon side by side, and Casey's got the position. Hard racing here with 127 to go. Coming into this race, Tony Stewart had led the most laps in five races this season. He won three of them. Led 146 at Atlanta last week.
214 laps are complete here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Tony Stewart continues to lead. Here's our Napa field summary. Nine different leaders, eight cautions. And we can actually update now. Three cars are out of the race. Paul Menard, Ken Schrader, and Michael Waltrip. Tony Stewart has led 162 laps. Let's take you through the field, Matt. A 20 is hooked up. Bill, he is yarding the competition, leading 163 of 215 laps. And Stewart says in 27 years of racing, he's never had one particular race car. And he said, that is my favorite race car. But this particular chassis, after a win at Kansas on fuel mileage, last week dominating win at Atlanta, he says, this is my new favorite race car. And it shows. Marty? Matt, the old racing cliche goes, loose equals fast. And that's certainly the case for Clint Boyer on their last three stops. The 07 team has made no changes to that car. Clint very happy with it. He's already pulled off one career first this weekend. His first ever Craftsman Truck Series win on Friday night. He would love to score his first next Hell Cup win today, Dave. This morning, Kyle Busch's crew chief, Alan Gustafson, told me we've got a car that's not bad, but it's really not a winner. Unless we can do a little something different. They changed the aero package when they came to this race. Different style of body, but it really needs to clean air. And he got that after that two tire stop. Alan. Uh, Jimmy Johnson is running right now in fourth position. After the restart a couple laps, Jimmy has been running the middle and upper lane of the race for the last little while. He called in and said, I'm going to go back to the bottom. Let's try this. Tell me how the lap times are. Matt. Kevin Harvick won Saturday's Bush race. He survived the wild card races, Talladega and Martinsville, but he's had issues elsewhere, Dover and Atlanta. Right now running in the fifth position. The car starts out great, but it starts to go to the tight side, middle to the end of the run. Marty? Well, Matt, this has been standard operation for Casey Kane's team this year. They kind of languish in the back half of the top 10 for the first part of the race. But once we hit halfway, they are very good. Kane's car getting better. He's a little too tight at the beginning of the run. And actually, the longer he runs, the looser he gets. He gave a little wave to Kevin Harvick as he goes past for fifth. The Kurt Busch radioed in recently that his car feels the best that it has all race long since he got booted off the lead after an early pit stop. Here's a team that really needs to find something for 2007 on these mile and a half tracks on the intermediate speedways this year. Their average finish is 25th. Dave? Reed Sorensen is running a car that's kind of old school, according to his crew chief, Jimmy Elledge. It's one that is from earlier this year, but they've made some updates to it. It runs in the top 10. Just made a slight adjustment for Reed last time, an air pressure adjustment. They expect to be good the longer they run. Matt? Running ninth is Jeff Gordon. He says, boy, what a difference a year makes for this team and their intermediate track program. It has really turned around. Had a lot of confidence coming in about maybe scoring that first win here at Texas, but it felt like of the final three tracks, this may very will be the toughest. Gordon says the car is still tight on exit. E.B. Early part of the race, former NASCAR Bush Series champ Martin Truex Jr. made a spirited charge up from his starting spot in 34th into the top 10. Then the handling got off and they fell back a little bit. Now this last adjustment, Truex says the car is responding well. He just shipped his way back into the top 10. Marty. Alan, let's update you on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Restarted 20th, came on the radio to the guy, said, didn't I tell you I was tight? Need to fix that condition a little bit more. Tight in the center, needs a little more forward bite coming off the corner, but he's picked up five spots since we've gone green. Obviously, the A car getting better, Alan. Well, Matt Kenseth's team continues to adjust on this 17 car, and he continues to move forward in this run of the race. That is up to 18th position now. Kyle Petty will be the next car. He'll have to pass for a spot. These guys continuing to try and dial the handling into this race car. It's been a struggle all day. Matt. Alan, today's performance for Denny Hamlin has to come as a complete shock. His average finish in two next Hell Cup starts at Texas is fifth. Felt like this was going to be the race where they could really step up and make a push in the points, but they have struggled big time. The car just way too tight. They have pushed in spring rubbers, pitted twice under the caution, back on lap 176. Big adjustment trying to get this car to free up. Meanwhile, Mark Martin, his day just continues to get worse, involved in that spin on the front stretch, currently running back in the 30th position. Knows now if he wants to get another win for Jack Roush, it's going to have to come either next week at Phoenix or the season finale at Homestead, Dave. Jeff Burton brought out the caution on lap 90, ran the car into the wall when a right, tire, right front tire went down. They repaired that car some 67 laps down. He now uses his spotter in a little different way. As cars come toward him, he says, tell the guy behind me he doesn't need to drive through me and ask him which way he'd prefer to pass me. Jeff being very kind to everyone who wants to go by him late in the stages of this race, Bill. 
Thank you, Dave. 31 cars on the lead lap. Ward Burton running in the 31st position. Stewart leads by four seconds over Clint Boyer. And there you can see how strong he has been throughout the day. Tony Stewart working out, eating a little better, losing some weight, and trying to put the field in his mirror here at Texas. Who's the best quarterback in the NFL, Peyton Manning or Tom Brady? Tonight, 8 Eastern on NBC, a quarterback showdown as Peyton and the undefeated Colts face Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. And before the big game, catch up on all the day's NFL action with Bob Chris Sterling and the bus football night at America. Tonight, 7 Eastern, right here on NBC. Well, I think we know which car is the best one in the field. That orange one there? I, well, I would pull for it. Tony Stewart led a total of 174 laps in his first nine races here at Texas. 174. Today he has led 179. Oh, Reed Sorensen oh, around. Don't go across the oh. racetrack. Kurt Busch just got by. Don't Caution is out. All right, we spun out there for some reason. Right rear tire's flat. Well, he might have done that when he... Yeah, left front's flat, yeah. right rear's flat. Was he slid across the pavement. Was running sixth. They just can't see the, seal the deal. It's Kyle Busch in the five, Reed down low. Wow, both Busch brothers got lucky on that one. Because he's First gonna go Kyle, back across yeah. the racetrack. Wow, look <laughs> got his brother. <laughs> BP, I think he just, I think he just got under there and got loose. He might have. Because you already see the one tire blue when he had, when he had him locked up. I see the right rear is flat, but it might have been caused by the flat spot that he put in there when he slammed on the <laughs> brakes. 102 to go. Pit road will be open this time. Joe Nemechek in the 0-1 car is the lucky dog. Tony Stewart's the race leader. Then it's Clint Boyer, Jimmy Johnson, Casey Kane, Kyle Busch. Here they come, Allen. Well, Jimmy Johnson's been around the top five just about all day, but just hasn't had enough to get up and run with Tony Stewart. Going to make an air pressure adjustment in the right rear this time. See if that makes the difference for the 48. That small air pressure change in the right front for Tony Stewart. The winds have picked up. The track temperatures come down about another four degrees. Is trying to stay with this racetrack here in Texas. Marty? Clint Boyer's in the middle of your screen, that 07 car. He said, man, I'm hanging on to this car. It's extremely loose, meaning the back end wants to kick around, but I'm afraid to make any changes to it. Once again, no changes to the 07 car, Dave. Kyle Busch is now trying to leave his pit. Wow, just barely gets around the 16 bunch. A four tire change and wedge both sides a little tight, and so is that exit. I'm guessing that was a little close, huh, Dave? Man, the 16 guys are lucky because Kyle made a hard right turn. So that, the two tire, change actually worked for Kyle because yeah, it yeah. worked. He, he hung up there in the top 10. He got the break. He got the caution. Came in. Changed four. Now he's got the track position. Good call in the pits. You see the race off of pit road. Stewart, Clint Boyer, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson. And there's Kyle under caution with 101 to go at Texas. And we're back to the action here in Indianapolis. Another strike by Gilbert. Brian Latt needs to. Sunday night lights at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. And uh, the excitement of pit road. Here's we, what Dave was watching. Yeah, watch this as the five car leaves and the rear tire changer on the 16 of Greg Biffle. Joe Slingerland looks at, where did you come from? And then the 11 car goes down pit road and there's a tire bouncing in front of him. Casey Mears hit Bliss's tire when he left his pit and sent it for a ride. Tell you what. Tell you what, that guy did pretty good running over there picking that thing up. Those are heavy. Yes, they are. About 65 pounds with the inner liner in them. Back to green with 98 to go. 
Stewart, Boyer, Kane, Johnson, and Kyle Busch. And now when now Kyle Busch is thinking, we did it. We got me up here. Our strategy worked. Now I'm going for it. Right behind his teammate in the 48. But it doesn't take Tony Stewart long to put a few car lengths yeah. on second place. I'll tell you what, that car gets some restarts. Jeff Gordon in ninth back there. Popple in that 32 is a couple of laps down. I tell you, Popple has, has his hand. hands full all day long. <laughs> that car does not look like it's been too much fun today. And tries to get up and get out of the way. Kurt Busch, Martin Truex Jr. go by. There's Junior in the eight. Made his way up to 12th now. I tell you, I'm amazed that this car is running as well as it is after, after he hit the wall of turn four and bat as hard as he did. Because you didn't think you, you thought the damage to the back of the car was going to be substantial enough that they wouldn't be able to go Whoa. anywhere. Yeah, I thought that he was going to be in the rear trailing arms and the rear panard bar and all that stuff, but Marty, evidently, I was wrong. And remember, DP, too, at one point, this team was 34th. Junior also not feeling well. I think he's a little more determined to get back to the front. He said the car is not driving that badly, just a little bit too tight. Bill, that's a battle for second place. Casey Kane taking it from Clint Boyer. Thanks, Marty. Kane looking back at Boyer. There's a little over a second behind Stewart. Earnhardt Jr. has made his way to 11th now. Five chasers run inside the top eight. And, I mean, and this is real important for those guys. I mean, for everybody right now, you've got to get a good finish out of here. You're, you're losing opportunities. I mean, Junior Junior was a second in points right before that happened because he was running second place. So uh, these guys know they need to come out of here with a good finish if they're still going to have a shot at winning that championship at Homestead. Junior, by going by Scott Riggs, I think is now 80 points behind Jimmy Johnson. When did he start today? 84 back? Yes. So it's kind of a wash. He's passed a bunch of cars. Kevin Harvick going by it. Carl Edwards in 99, that's the sixth position. Give me that look easy. You get inside 100 to go when the race is on, isn't it? Man, I'm telling you. Update on Harvick from Matt. His spotter, Billy O'Day, was trying to help him from the spotter stand, telling him what the nine of Casey Kane was doing on the racetrack, which was helping Casey explain to him that the nine was hitting a lighter spot on the pavement high in turn two that seemed to help him on exit, picking up a bunch of time. The problem is Kevin was trying to find that spot to see if it helped him, but boy, what a good run they are having currently in the sixth position. After a tough week, last Sunday in Atlanta. Harvick trying to hang on to his championship chances. His teammate Jeff Burton. Early scored 42nd after he blew a tire and hit the front stretch wall early in the race. Riggs and Gordon. Riggs taking the ninth position. Gordon in 10. Boy, Scott Riggs looking for the big finish. Scott Earnhardt right in his windshield right now. Drift up the track. Tell you what, there's some good racing going on, but Tony Stewart is having a day to himself. Leads by a second and a half here at Texas. Look at our DLP picture technology race recap. Last ride for Terry Labonte. His car owner Rick Hendrick and his teammates waited out the rain. Around the first four laps under green and yellow, Jeff Burton brought out an early caution. Cut a tire, hit the wall. And hit the wall extremely hard. Lap 165, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Gets some loose, arrow loose off the corner. Goes up and pounds the wall. And folks, I'm telling you, hit the wall hard, but he's still running very, very well. Earnhardt currently ninth. Kenny Schrader has a right front tire go down, causes 
a melee behind him with Sterling Marlin. Mark Martin involved. I think Dave Blaney got a piece of that. Kenseth and Earnhardt Jr. got through at our DLP race recap. Under the lights at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, race number eight in the chase for the next Nextel Cup championship. There's Jimmy Johnson getting around the 07, taking that third spot away from Clint Boyer. And all of a sudden, the 07, a Boyer is not nearly as fast as he was 40, 50 laps ago. Now we're, we're starting to see that stage of the race, BP, where we see guys like Jimmy Johnson get stronger and Casey Kane get stronger. Allen. First time all day that I, with these words have come across Jimmy Johnson's radio bill that his car feels good. He's always described it as times that I've heard as good, but it's liking the way it's handling now, and this could be the top of the race you want to be the best, huh? Marty? Alan Clint Boyer and his team debated several times about whether or not last stop. The last four stops, they've made no changes to the 07 car. And a lot of times when you have a fast race car, you get lulled into a sense of, of comfort with the race car, and you don't want to make any changes to it, but the racetrack changes throughout the day. They probably have not kept up with the track here. The car is now a little, still a little too loose for Clint, and the racetrack is changing, but they decided to make no changes. They will, will make changes on their next stop, however. And that's a great point, Marty, because, uh, you know, when you're when you're a rookie driver, when you feel that comfort, you don't want to change the car. You want to you don't want to make a change. But a veteran would know that, OK, this track is cooling down. We're going to have to make a change or I'm going to lose that. Car. What was that word that Marty used to comfort, comfort comfortability, comfortability of a car? Comfortability, Wally. Thank you, Marty. I, I used it because I heard someone else say it. <laughs> <laughs> that's my story. and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Jeff Gordon in 10th, Martin Truex Jr. in 11th. They're behind 9th place Dale Earnhardt Jr. Boy, Truex has had another good run. Can he put a big finish on it for himself? Don't say anything, BP. Yeah, just watch the race, Benny. All right? Gotcha. <laughs> These guys need a good finish. They have off, just awful luck this year. Had a great run going uh, last week. Good one going here. And I'm telling you, wait till they get to Homestead. They got some form at Homestead. Yeah, I talked to Martin about that. They were pretty happy about that test. He was looking forward to this race, too, though. City had a good car. Still got 79 test. laps. More on Truex, A.B.? Yeah, Wally said uh, Martin felt he had a good car, but this isn't the car they wanted to bring here. They wanted to bring the car they ran in Atlanta last week. Then when they had problems with it, they sustained some damage. They had a bearing problem go out a flat tire, which resulted in body damage. They took the car back to their shops outside of Charlotte, spent until 2 in the afternoon Monday working on it with the intention of bringing it here. Then realized they had too much damage, and the caution flags out. Caution on the speedway with 78 to go. Hey, Robbie Gordon is very slow. I'm assuming this is what has brought the caution flag out. So, Robbie, you had high hopes after a strong qualifying run. Uh-oh. Blew an engine right there. Sees his day go up in smoke. Travis Quapel will be the lucky dog. Gets one of his laps back. Robbie heads for the garage. All right, let's see if this 20 crew can hold service yet one more time. Where they have been strong, haven't they, That's last been. week in this race? Right. They got Tony out front. His car's running well, handling well. He's feeling good. Tony's doing a great job driving, and her pit crew keeps making pit stops as fast as anyone else. Chief Greg Zipadelli's guys getting ready to go over the wall here. The reigning NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion already has two wins in the 2006 chase portion of the season, but not eligible for the championship this year. Good One, thing for everybody else in the top boy, ten. Running really well. Pit road will be open this time. What'd you get for a fuel window here, BP? About 62 okay. to maybe 66. Okay. At the max. So you can't make it from here. 
Unless you get a so. lot of caution laps. See how it all plays out. Time for the guys on pit road to shine. And you have to make sure you don't get a speeding ticket. Alan, here we go. Jimmy Johnson asked his crew to just tickle the air pressure a little bit on the car. An adjustment in the right rear. Really happy with the way it's handling. Let's see if the crew can pick him up a spot here on these sets of pit stops. Matt? The co-pit crew coaches for Gibbs, Paul Alep, and Al Schufert. Very proud of their guys today. Strong stops. Two tenths of an air pressure change in the left rear tire. Stewart says needs just a little help getting back into the gas. Marty? Casey Kane is that nine car in the middle of your screen. He said, I want the same adjustments you made last time. Car is just a little bit too tight, meaning it won't turn. Half around up on the track bar, half around down. Left rear wedge, Dave? Kyle Busch leaving pit road. Clearly misses the 16 bunch this time. They made a, just a, light, a slight air pressure adjustment. Car a little hard to turn past the center of the corner. Thank you, gentlemen. Looks like Boyer lost a few spots there. See how this all plays out. Tony Stewart's boys getting it done on pit road. He has been dominating today here at Texas. NBC Sports live at the Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. Race number eight in the chase for the next all cup championship. And we said you can't make any mistakes on pit road, but some guys did. Matt Kenseth, one of the championship contenders, too fast exiting. We'll have to start at the tail end of the longest line. There's Matt in that 17 car. And also issues for Clint Boyer. I guess a lug nut jammed up on the right rear of his car, and he came in fourth, came out, came in the pits fourth, came out 11th. Tony Stewart went in as the race leader and is the race leader. For all the people that work at Joe Gibbs Racing, here are the guys that go over the wall and get it done on the 20 car. Greg Zipidelli, Berlin, Connecticut. Tom Dean, Long Valley, New Jersey. Ira Joe Hussey, Manchester, New Hampshire. Jason Lee, Willimantic, Connecticut. Jody Fortson, China Grove, North Carolina. Todd Foster, Birmingham, Alabama. Jeff Patterson, Escondido, California. Brian Larson, Escanaba, Michigan. You can't make the mistakes on pit road, and those guys don't. You see the seven stops today, 13.6. Well, the 17 car, since he's got to go to the back, has just stopped and topped off. I wonder if that means anything about trying to go the rest of the way. Well, BP, 74 to go. And they, I guess if they got the right cautions and all the planets lined up. Yeah. But but those guys specialize in running out of fuel. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's true. true. <laughs> Not sure they're the guys who do it. Yep. Alan? I will clarify just a little bit. Robbie has already told Matt. This was kind of Matt's idea. Should we come down and top off the fuel? Robbie Reiser, the crew chief, told him we can't make it to the finish anyway. But if this race goes green and those last pit stops are splash and dashes under green, They'll need to spend less time here than the other guys. Maybe they can pick up some spots. They'll take anything they can get right now. No kidding. Gonna have to restart 30th. See how it all plays out. You think everybody's racing for second today? Boy? I think everybody's racing for second tonight. Now, this is, I, there again, this is the time where Casey Kane does come on, the time of the race, but I just have not seen anybody that's got anything for that 20 car, Tony Stewart. 73 to go, and Stewart takes off. Two tires stopped for Greg Biffle in that 16 car. That's how we got to the third position. Oh, Kyle Busch with a strong move up in front of Harvick. Gets loose when he gets in front of him, but hangs on to it. Junior goes down underneath the 29 now, but got to get locked in, yep. It's Dale Jarrett in the 88. Junior sits in seventh. Oh, he's got Riggs on his bumper and then Truex Jr. And there's Boyer back there in that 07 car. Big bump down there in turn one of the tunnel. Update on Earnhardt, Marty. 
I think, Bill, they're fully back. They're about 10 laps short from making it all the way on fuel. Junior said that that was much better on that run right there. They made no changes. He said, if you're going to make my car looser, I feel like it'll be too loose. Make it tighter, I feel like it'll be too tight. Let's leave it right where it is. This may be our last stop of the night, so don't make any changes to it. I like the car where it is. What a rally for this team. They were 34th at one point, Bill. Now they're seventh. Has, he, has Earnhardt said how he's feeling lately, Marty? He has not mentioned how he's feeling, Bill, but the crew, I'm glad you asked that, is a little worried that when he hit the wall, he might have knocked in the crush panels on the right side. Those crush panels keep out all the fumes from the race car, so they're a little concerned about that. Again, they handed him on about an eight-inch piece of tape about six times early in the race, trying to settle down his stomach, but obviously he's had the flu all week and clearly doesn't feel very well, but he hasn't mentioned it lately. He picks up a couple more positions. He'll be feeling a lot better. Runs in seventh. And the big thing is he's got three chasers directly in front of him. Johnson, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick. Strong comeback. Tony Urie Jr. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that eight bunch. Bernard Jr. 67 back. That's manageable. Two to go after today in the chase for the next Tel Cop. Gain 17 today. Look at this. It's Casey Kane's time to go, right? Yeah, I mean, this is, like I said, this is normally the time where Casey Kane starts shining this time in the race. And I wasn't sure if Stewart was showing everything either because nobody's actually pressured him the whole race. So we'll see if. Casey Kane can get it done. Other than restarts, this is the first time he's seen anybody in his rearview right. mirror right. all day. Marty? And Bill, this is actually the worst part of the run for Casey Kane. Early in the run, his car is a little bit too tight, meaning he can't get the car to turn. But Casey said, as he was kind of funny, as he came in under the caution, he said, I'm driving the fool out of this car, and I can't catch that 20. He said he's driving something a little different. He doesn't have to worry about how he points his car into the corners. I have to set myself up going into the corner to make sure my exit is OK. Matt? Tony, Tony Stewart's car, Marty, has been nothing but incredible today. He told the team just how great that race car is. And Wally, you touched on it earlier. The guys in the chase have to be thankful that Stewart didn't make it in. If he had made it in by a wild card from the 11th position, like some of the, the ideas that people have thrown around to maybe tweak the chase, he would have entered Texas 13 markers out of the lead. More wins and more points scored than any chase driver so far in these eight races. Yeah, but they've been able to use a different strategy because they weren't in the chase. Right now, he's just trying to focus on the race. Casey Kane on his bumper. And probably the last guy he wants on his bumper because the line that Stewart Stewart runs is the low line. And the guy that's really good at the high line is in his mirror. So there's not a whole lot Stewart can do if that high line starts working for Casey Kane because Stewart doesn't want to run up there. He does not want to run up there. So that means that Casey Kane can get some air on his car to get some downforce to get him through the turns. If he had to follow Tony Stewart, then he would start losing the front end off the corner. And that might be why Tony's coming up a little bit off turn two to get pulled up in front of the nine car. Yeah, give him a little of that dirty air getting off the corners. Jimmy Johnson in the 48, Greg Biffle in the 16. Johnson currently owns the championship lead. That's Hendrick against Roush right there. That's for the third position. Update on Biffle from Dave. Yeah, Roush didn't start out very good today. Greg Biffle started this race 39th, and his crew chief, Doug Richard, told me that they weren't that great. They needed to try something late here. I just checked with him. He said, yeah, how well the five car did with two tires did influence us. We feel like this is uh, what we need to the end of the race. Track position, everything now for the 16. The Roush question, is, Sorry, the question is, can he outrace these guys at the end? We'll see. Roush Racing has won five of the 11 races here at Texas. Johnson gets the position. Harvick closes in behind him. Kane working the high groove in second behind race leader Tony Stewart. There's Johnson in third. Biffle in fourth. Harvick coming. Oh! Just like out of turn four. Turn two, that wall just jumps out to meet you, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, Biffle took two tires, right? Yes. Harvick trying to get the position and does. And I think Biffle in the 16 car is running about like Kyle Busch did in the five car when he had his two tires right. stuff. So he's hoping strategy works for him as well. Matt. 
Bill taking a page out of Jimmy Johnson's notebook. Kevin Harvick knows that you can still have a big swing as far as the way the championship standings look with just a little bit of misfortune for others and some good luck for you. When the lights went on here at Texas and the sun went down, Harvick's car has really come to life. They've made some significant adjustments throughout the day. The last stop, though, just a small wedge and track bar adjustment. He's changed his lineup a little bit, and it has really seemed to help this race car. And talking about Jimmy Johnson, the third place running car, just been told by his crew chief, Chad Canals, that Kevin Harvick is running faster lap times than him. Harvick in the 29. So Johnson looking at him in the rear view mirror. Chad told me this morning that, you know, you talk about Tony Stewart, who's been good in the chase, but except for a couple of things that really were out of their control, getting crashed in New Hampshire and getting crashed on the last lap racing for the win at Talladega, Chad said we would be the championship leader right now. Performance has not been our problem. Luck has been. They've had good luck these last few weeks, and they finished no worse than second. Yeah, the, the Jimmy Johnson that's going to challenge for the championship is the one we've seen the last three weeks. When everything comes together, they get the strong finish, the win at Martinsville. And while they did run well in some of those earlier races, they didn't have the luck or the situations to help them get to the front. Earnhardt Jr. and Scott Riggs. Jr. in seven. Trying to close in on that five car. That's the sixth position. Then Biffle on two tires would be next. Boy, if Earnhardt Jr. gets a top five out of this one. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, those guys slammed the wall pretty hard getting off a of four. And he didn't, and he has been sick. He's been sick all weekend, wasn't feeling well. He told his crew earlier, wasn't feeling well on the seat. He started in 34th on lap 170. Hit it six times to work on the car. Now he's seven, just eight seconds behind the leader. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep Riggs behind him. I don't think he is. His car runs really well after they change tires for about 10, 15 laps. And then these cars like Riggs and Truex become faster than his. Side by side, Riggs trying to take the position, has it for now. Truex right behind Earnhardt. The 10 moves in front of the 8. Allen. And Bill, this team took some criticism earlier this year when they were in position with a chance to win a race and had a bad last pit stop. Everybody said they choked under the pressure. Well, this team is thriving on the chance to get this car in position and have that last pressure pit stop again. They've made changes to the pit crew since earlier in the season. They feel like they're competitive with the best out there. They may get their chance under pressure here in these last uh, 56 laps. Marty? Alan Dillenhart Jr. has talked a lot this year about how he has matured as a driver and as a team leader. Today, Tony Urey Jr. led this team. After they wrecked, everybody was very calm. He calmly got the car fixed. Bill, as you said, six pit stops. And then Jr. came on the radio later and said the car is driving like it's wrecked. Stops after that to make the car even better. And here they are back in the top ten. Jr. says the car is a little slick on the right rear now which him that means his car is a little bit loose but he's trying to keep it on that bottom line and trying to get around that 10 car but he's awfully fast earlier in this weekend tony urey jr the crew chief for dale earnhardt jr said listen it's just gravy for us from here on in we might be a year away from winning the championship we've made our goal we made the chase we've been running well if they come back get a top five hang on in the points after today i think his philosophy the next two weeks is going to change going to have a new goal and that's going to be to win the next Tel Cup championship in the final two races of this season. There's Tony Urey Jr. Those two reunited this year. A lot of people didn't think it was going to work because it didn't end under very happy circumstances a little over a year ago. But Earnhardt won at Richmond made the chase right now third in the championship standings. An eighth on the track. Tony Stewart continues to lead by more than a second over Casey Kane. Yeah, Stewart's pulled out about a second ahead of Casey Kane and has pretty much maintained that. So I'm not, like I said earlier, I'm not sure we've, we've seen everything out of Tony Stewart. That was the first time he got pressured. Then he just kind of drove off there, got a second lead, and. In front of 
uh, Stewart today has been the pace, pace card. card, right? And he tried to take him out too. It looked <laughs> like, or at least wanted him to think about it. On board with Earnhardt, still looking at Riggs. Jimmy Johnson runs in third. He's five and a half seconds behind Stewart, and about a second and a half in front of Harvick. Kenseth in the 17, hit with a pit road speeding penalty, had a restart at the tail end of the longest line. That Vickers, yep, 19 spots, so that's for position right there. So Kenseth makes the pass. Update from Allen. Yeah, Bill, just been a day long struggle with the handling of this car. They have never challenged at all for a top 10 spot this entire day after feeling like they had a car that could finish in the top eight or better when the race started. Matt Kenseth is continuing to pound away behind the wheel of that car, giving everything he can to get every spot he can. If they pull out a top 10 on this one, it'll really be the rally of the year. What did you say they do better than anybody? <laughs> they take mud pie and turn it into apple pie. <laughs> They've done it so many times. Trying to do it again today with 50 to go. He's gained 10 spots since the restart. Former series champion. Came in here as the championship leader, but had a poor qualifying run. Had to start 36th. Got a good finish in Atlanta. This is fifth place. Greg Biffle in the 16, Kyle Busch in the five. Kyle trying to make the pass of Biffle, Dave. And his motor's going. He has radioed that to his crew. It's not gone yet, but according to the driver, it won't last much longer. According to us as well, Dave. <laughs> you can hear it when he goes by. It, it, we've been hearing about the last three or four laps. We weren't sure who it was, if it was Biffle or or Kyle, but yeah, it sounds pretty bad. It's Biffle. Thanks to Dave. He narrowed it down for us. <laughs> Riggs is going to get the position. And the question is, where is he going to be when that thing goes? Yeah, well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people get that position. Here comes Earnhardt. These are the things we talked about at Atlanta last week right. about these 500 mile races, these 24 degree banks, very difficult on the engines. And your cars run well all day. You haven't had any problems to get down to 75, 60, 50 to go. And the engine tuners are just wandering around behind the pit stall, hoping nothing goes wrong. Earnhardt got the spot. Now Truex around Biffle. Six laps to go. Boy, it's really going now. It's getting, on, getting worse. Tony Stewart leads by more than a second over Casey Kane. Let's do a top five through the field for you. Starting with Tony Stewart, and here is Matt Yoakum. Bill definitely making a statement, leading 234 laps. Now they are about 12 laps short of fuel. The car that won on fuel mileage at Kansas, they're already talking about making a small air pressure change. When they make that last stop, backing up that small air pressure change they made on their previous stop, Marty. Casey Kane says the last change on his car, Matt, was a little too much. He needs that front end to work just a little bit better if he wants to catch that 20 car. In terms of fuel, they are 15 laps short on fuel. So when they stop, they're talking about a two-tire change only. When they get the fuel in, get two new tires. Hopefully, that's enough to catch the 20 car. Alan? Jimmy Johnson running in third. Lap 315 or so will be the magic number for Jimmy Johnson. They last pitted at lap number 258. He will get fuel to make it to the finish, will need fuel to make it to the finish. The question is, if the stop's under green or under caution, what do you do for tire strategy? Matt? 29, Kevin Harvick, fifth here in the spring, currently runs fourth. The car just way too tight on the exit of the corner. They, too, around eight to nine laps short on fuel. 
bouncing around whether to go a four or two tire change. Right now, they just need to get the tightness out of the race cars. We're closing into the finish, Dave. Kyle Busch appreciates the fact that his team can do fuel mileage calculation, but he just did it himself. Hey, can we make it all the way? Oh, no, no, we can't. In fact, his crew chief backs that up about six laps short for the five car. Thank you, gentlemen. Scott Riggs is 10th, then it's Earnhardt Jr. in 7th, through X, Clint Boyer, Greg Biffle. Now, Bill, how far did you say Casey Kane was behind Tony Stewart? He was 1.1. And now he's two-thirds of a second. He is closing in on Tony Stewart about a tenth of a second per lap. But they got to make a pit stop. Yep. And that's... I think where it's going to be won or lost right now if this thing stays green. Is, go ahead. Sorry, Wally. This is how, how you get on pit lane, how fast you get to that line on pit entrance, the guys putting in the right amount of fuel and getting back up to speed. There's a lot more to a pit stop than just pulling into that pit box <laughs> and getting serviced by your pit crew. It's about getting on a pit lane and off under green. Six wins this season for Casey Kane, including one here at Texas. He swept the races at Charlotte. He's trying to do that today at the Texas Motor Speedway. He knows this is his kind of track. I'd say any track you carry a lot of momentum, a lot of speed is, is the, where we're our best. I mean, that's it showed all season long and, you know, we'll work on the other tracks, too, to get them better. I think that's you know, driver and and just figuring out what I'm looking for on those tracks. But I think our mile and a half, two mile tracks have been really good this year. And we've been good at other tracks too, just probably not quite as consistent as we are every time we come to Texas or every time we go to Charlotte. One in Atlanta, one here at Texas, both the Charlotte races, Michigan and California. Team director for Casey King, Kenny Francis. Everyone tells me Kenny Francis was one heck of a short track race car. Yes, guy. yes. Marty and Bill, this is the best part of the run for Casey Kane. Early in the run, they struggle with a tight race car. As the run goes along, the car gets a little looser. I have a question for Benny and Wally. They have to pit just from hearing everybody else's report about 10 laps earlier than everybody else. I think that's an advantage. They'll have the fresh tires on a little bit earlier than everybody else. Maybe they can make up some time on that 20 car. The problem, Marty, is is everyone going to change tires exactly. or just put in a half a can of fuel? If you're going to do the five or six seconds and change the tires or whatever it takes to change two tires and some guys come in and just do the splash and go, you're going to lose a lot of track time. So it's going to take eight or nine seconds to change two side, two right side tires. Right. Eight or nine seconds. And get back around to the other side of the and, car. And you can put a splash of gas in the car in probably enough gas to finish in three seconds. Right. The tires probably over that time wouldn't have the benefit you'd be hoping for, would you think? Well, as, as fast as these guys are going, it's almost a football field a second, right? You know, on this racetrack. So, you know, are you willing? Can you make up 300 yards on the racetrack with those two fresh tires? Starting to work their way here through more lap traffic. Tony Stewart, the race leader. Casey Kane runs second more on the nine from Marty. Well, I was going to follow in on that conversation. They, they're they so much shorter on fuel than everybody else. They're about 15 to 16 laps shorter that they have to take that much more fuel. That much that takes that much longer. So they have the time to take on two tires. But you're right. That may, in the end, wind up hurting them. Yeah, if they're going to be in there that long, you're right, Marty. They may as well change the two tires. But I think there's going to be some people that can go longer and oh, they don't need that much fuel. And, and somebody might have might even try and go without stopping depending on if the, you know what might play out you never know don't forget football night at America coming up next right here on NBC Bob Costas and the guys getting you ready for the big Sunday night game the Colts and the Patriots Tony Stewart has been in control most of the day we've run 300 laps now he has led 244 of them but 26-year-old Casey Kane in that nine car run second. Seven career wins for Casey, six this season, including one earlier this year right here at Texas. Kane has run four races at this track, has a first place and a second place finish among his accomplishments here in Texas. That's 63 laps in April. Stewart's going to run into a little traffic here. See how he gets through it. See, now he's got two cars in front of him that are side by side. That's going to let Casey Kane close the gap considerably. 
Tony said, come on, guys, somebody pick a lane. Award look at look at here. Look how much uh, Casey Kane gained just in that one corner because Tony Stewart had no place to go. And Ward Burton in that four car is trying to stay on the lead lap. So whole race Stewart pretty hard. Tony down low clears Ward. Kane off of two. Ooh. Listen to the wall there yes. in the 49 car a little bit. Casey Kane looking to the low groove. Trying to move around Ward Burton. Tony Stewart. Two time series champion. Disappointing night at Richmond, Virginia when he failed to qualify for the chase for the next Elkoff. See the, the bad break that Casey Kane is catching is Ward Burton is running his line. Right. And when he had to move down on the racetrack, it slowed him down. You can see the lap traffic ahead. Stewart, the orange car right in front. Then more lap traffic. Going to see how the pit strategy plays out here in the closing laps of Texas. Allen. Well, remember that story about guys in uh, faster tires maybe helping out? Matt Kenseth is going to try something. Robbie Riser here. This is going to be short pitting, seeing if the speed they gain on fresh tires is going to help them pick up some spots from where they were running in this last run of the race. Kenseth is gone. Well, that's a new strategy that we hadn't wow. even thought of. Well, that may help if the caution comes out after all these guys have pitted and changed two or none. It may make a huge difference. It's just all going to depend how and if the yellow falls. Marty? Well, Bill, I can promise you, promise you this. Casey Kane is trying to get that 20 car. <laughs> he came on the radio. He said, guys, I'm sorry. I have killed my front tires trying to catch him. Kenny Francis came back and said, listen, ride right where you are. We're about 10 laps from our stop, about lap 314, now nine laps until the, the nine car hits pit road. Thanks, Marty. Interesting move by Robbie Reiser, crew chief for Matt Kenseth. Kenseth currently second in the championship standings. Now, I don't believe that Kane has any choice but change right sides because if he's burning the right front tire off the car, trying to catch Tony Stewart, then he needs to get that tire off and a better one on there. And he's obviously now communicated that to his crew. Well, no, he did. He, he said that he burned the right front off right. trying to catch him. So, yeah, so exactly. Now they're like, well, we don't know. We gotta do got to do it. Yeah, got nothing to lose. May as well change too. Go for it. And Benny, if you're a driver like Tony Stewart right now, you have complete confidence in your over the wall gang because they deliver for you week in and week out, and they have been virtually flawless today. Oh, uh, well, the last two weeks. Right. Martin Truex Jr. in the one. Dale Earnhardt Jr. driving that red eight. That's for the seventh spot, and Clint Boyer's right behind him. Truex the seventh, Earnhardt eighth. Strong run for Dale Earnhardt Jr. after hitting the wall on lap 170. Terry Labonte slow on the apron of the racetrack. More on Kenseth Allen. Yeah, Bill, just want to clarify what they're thinking by short hitting. Matt Kenseth right now is running nearly one second faster than the race leader on the racetrack by having those fresh tires. So by stopping now and running that second a lap faster, as long as the caution doesn't come out, he's going to gain a lot of ground on these guys he was racing with and might even be able to pull off a top 15 finish here. The only risk to the strategy is if the caution comes out, he's going to have given up maybe eight, nine positions on the racetrack by getting trapped a lap down to uh, other guys he was racing with before. So they're gambling on the caution not coming out and using the speed to try and steal some points away that might win him a championship in a couple of weeks. A big gamble and a big F. We have had 10 caution flags so far today, 25 laps to go. But again, they had nothing to lose. Where they were running, they had nothing to lose. I mean, they weren't gonna get I mean, they were right around 16, 17. They weren't really getting anywhere from that point. But if the caution comes out now, he's going to be back about 25th. And you're right, Wally. He was 18th when they decided that was the move they were going to make. There's race leader Tony Stewart. 
Won a week ago tonight in Atlanta. Had a very strong car. Is that Jimmy Johnson in front of Casey Kane? That's just what I was looking at. Yes. Just made the move. Johnson has moved into that second spot. And he is a half second a lap faster than Tony Stewart. Allen. Allen. Well, you know, one of the things that the crew chiefs do down here on Pitbull, well, you guys know BP, Wally, and Bill, but for people who aren't familiar, they watch a computer that shows every lap that their car and every other car on the field runs. For the last 25 laps, Jimmy Johnson has been faster than the two cars in front of him. He came from two and a half seconds behind to catch Casey Kane, and now he's only seven-tenths of a second behind Tony Stewart, and he's running a little bit faster by a tenth or two-tenths of a second per lap than the race leader. So Tony has a new picture in his mirror. See now Casey Kane, the 17 car took a chance. He short pitted. That's exactly what Casey Kane needs to do right now. Because? Because his tires have given up. Tony Stewart has pulled away from him. Johnson has passed him for the second position. And all he's going to do is keep losing ground. So you're right, BP. They should hit the pit. Jimmy Johnson trying to close in on Tony Stewart. Like Stewart is caught that 38 car he's been kind of hung behind him there for a couple laps now he gets down underneath him boy Johnson is there two years ago in the first ever chase for the next Hell Cup championship Jimmy Johnson finished second by eight points right now he runs second on the track behind Tony Stewart but leads the championship standings by 63 points with two races to go Johnson and his crew chief Chad Canals have worked extremely hard trying to capture that next Hell Cup Ooh. championship. Ooh, Stewart bobbled a little bit right over that bump. The car got a little bit loose. And there you see Kenseth with the new tires right four behind tires. those two. But no four. Four. <laughs> Marty. And Bill, that was Tony Urey Jr. You heard he said four tires. So Dale Earnhardt Jr. will gamble a little bit here and take on four fresh tires. Kind of late to be doing that. The fuel to get to the end. The tire carrier slips as he comes around the back side of the car. They're going to get the four tires on and get Jr. back out on the track. They're going to also make an air pressure adjustment on that eight car. He said the car was extremely loose for Casey Kane. They asked him, when do you want to come? He said, as soon as possible. They're going to stick with the plan, though, of two tires on Casey Kane. Kane's car. They're going to make a track bar adjustment as well. Go down one round in that track bar. He was a little too loose by himself, and he killed the car when he went. He stalled it, and then he got it going, but they lost some time on pit road, Bill. You have to be mistake-free on these pit stops. The time you lose, you will not make up on the racetrack. Scott Riggs on pit road. Allen. That is from fourth place. Scott Riggs pits. Bill, where he was running before this stop. Two tires, top off the fuel. Gone. We're expecting Jimmy Johnson any second. Riggs not a contender for the championship, trying to get his first NASCAR Next Hell Cup Series win. Be around the pit. Pit this time. Pit this time. Chad Canals telling his driver, pit this time. It's driver Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. And look at the ground he's lost to Stewart. I, I, I'm telling you guys, I think Stewart looks up in the mirror when he decides he wants to go. He just goes. <laughs> just presses the right one on the right, huh? Yep. The accelerator. Clint Boyer, Marty. He spent this entire run rallying back from restarting 11th. They had a lug nut hang up on the right rear, as BP told you earlier. They're also going to take four tires here, hoping that these tires will help them gain some of this track position back and the fuel to make it all the way to the end. Matt. Tony Stewart says, I just want a small air pressure change in the right front. The car has gone extreme to the tight side. They were talking about it. They went four. They would do a left rear change, but only a two-tire change for Stewart so he doesn't lose a whole lot of time here on pit road. Now we're going to see how it all plays out. Tony Stewart. Now Johnson is on pit road. Allen. Let's see how many tires they're going to take here. I believe this is going to be a four tire change on the 48 car. They have the left side tires out. Here they come around the near side of the car. Chad Knauss rolling the dice that the extra two fresh tires will be worth enough speed to perhaps overtake Tony Stewart. Matt and Kevin Harvick. And Kevin Harvick, who won Saturday's Bush race, already service is complete. Small fuel and right side change. Meanwhile, the 24 of Jeff Gordon, he comes in. He could have hit anywhere from lap four, 314 on. He now pulls in as the 42 of Mears also gets his stop. Everyone going right side tires. Jeff Gordon careful not to exceed the speed limit exiting pit road. 
Kyle Busch headed for Dave Burns. And he said, my spot in turn two is still bad. That's a spot where his car gets a little bit tight, wants to push, and they, uh, but he encouraged the team not to make changes to the car. He'll get a cleaner windshield, they pull a tear off the way, and just two right side tires, and fuel for Kyle, and the tire changer scoots to safety. 99 car of Carl, Carl Edwards in as well. They will come in, they give up, uh, when they started making stops, they were running 12, and Carl will receive right side tires as well. They've got the left sides up on top of the wall, had talked about giving him that handling advantage, but they're going to stay with two only on Edwards. So Carl Edwards, his last win came at this track, has gone winless this season. His last victory one year ago tonight. Bobby Labonte on pit road. Allen. The right side tire change for Bobby Labonte. They've been just on the fringes of the top ten for much of the afternoon. He pits from the lead here. Cycling through green flag pit stops. Here at the Texas Motor Speedway inside of 15 laps to go. Rookie J.J. Yaley currently scored the race leader, but there's Tony Stewart right behind him in that orange car. And when this thing cycles out, Stewart will have 10 seconds on Jimmy Johnson. That's the difference between two tires and four tires with 12 to go. So that means the 48 car has got to be over a second a lap faster in order to catch the 20 to win this race. Now has less than 12 laps to do it. Don't forget, coming up next, Football Night at America. Right here on NBC. And we've got the Colts and the Patriots later tonight. Those are teammates out of the racing stable of Coach Joe Gibbs. Rookie J.J. Yaley in the 18. Veteran Tony Stewart in the 20. This passes for the lead, but Yaley has not pitted yet. This puts Stewart back up front. Now, it's important that Stewart doesn't get hung up in a lot of traffic, or that will let the guys that are chasing him catch him that have four tires. Matt Kenseth was 18th when he pitted for the four tires. Right now, he runs 18th. And I'll tell you what, Tony Stewart has, over Casey Kane, about a four-second lead, almost four and a half seconds. Tony Stewart must have done an incredible job getting on and off pit road. And, and Jimmy Johnson has to be more careful of that, Benny, because he truly can't afford this beating penalty because he's in the chase and Stewart is not. And Stewart can bump up to 100 RPM off the maximum pit road speed. Matt Yoakum. Bill, in the car rotation, the 20 team had planned on bringing a different race car here to Texas. But after winning at Atlanta in victory lane, they made the decision. We're going to bring this particular race car and see if they can make it back-to-back -back wins. If you recall, they really haven't changed much in this race car. They basically power washed it, and they even left the sticker that they put on the dash last week for Stewart as motivation. Simply said, hardware space available. Well, guess what? They took home that huge Baz Pro Shops trophy had to put it in two pieces they've got another trophy here in texas they've got some space available to team hauler to go back oh, to got somebody in the wall caution has come out greg biffle has hit the wall man this is going to change things now that four seconds you were talking about gone how about the 10 seconds gone now stewart's got guys in his mirror that have four tires and if you're at the back of the field with 17 cars on the lead lap does somebody come back there, come get tires to try and help their position a little bit? It depends. I don't think Matt Kenseth has run enough laps. If, if five or six or seven guys come in front of him, I think he needs to stay out. Right. See how it plays out. Be a single file restart. Greg Biffle in the 16. Looks like simply that the air left the right front tire rapidly. Talked about it earlier, he felt that his motor was beginning to go south. Dave, you know a little bit more? Yeah, he, Greg feels like he ran over something, and that's what put the 16 into the wall. And he had been running on seven cylinders. The motor hadn't, get, hadn't given up. Car handling well, but not under power. And then that ended his day. Greg Biffle finished second in the chase for the next Hell Cup last year. Had six wins, but it's been a disappointing season for him here in 2006. Just one victory and outside the cut line for the chase. Matt Yoakum, I got a question for you. Go ahead, BP. The 29 car, did he change two or four? Two tires. Okay, because he's been awfully fast here the last few laps. 
Absolutely, and the 20 team is concerned about the 48 who took four tires. Remember yeah. back to last week, it really was a decision of Junior staying out on his older tires. The 20, they didn't really uh, even you know, debate their decision to come to pit road and get four, and that was a huge difference last week. Now they're concerned maybe the roles are going to be reversed a little bit here because they took two tires. So Junior has four. Jimmy Johnson has four. I guess that those are the only two cars that have that changed four tires. Right, right. Matt Kenseth ch changed and four, Kenseth. but he's way back in 16th right now. Well, I would say that Kenseth will probably come in now. Marty? Uh, BP listening on the radio. Casey Kane just came on and said, we blew up, we blew up. And then Kenny Francis came back and said, we blew up. He said, yeah, I just lost the engine. We blew up. He's coming to pit road. Unbelievable. They were going to finish in the top five. This is the way the chase has gone for the 19. Casey Kane coming down pit road with what he thinks is an engine that has expired. That's amazing. That is amazing. 26 year old from Washington, one here in April. Pit stops, Matt. And Bill, the 24 of Gordon is in as well. Right side tires already gone on. They really have nothing to really uh, debate here. Going for the four tire change. Give it a shot. See what can happen. Nine. Casey Kane is done. The hood is up on pit road. Word from down there finished. Marty. They looked inside the engine to see if it was a spark plug and indeed it was uh, something internal. These guys are done. This is an unbelievable turn of events, Bill. 38th at Atlanta, 7th at Martinsville, had the win at Charlotte. Strong run at Talladega. Last week took himself out when he made a bad move on the track, ran into David Stremme. But tonight, Benny, exactly what you talked about before the race began, the engine builder's nightmare. Oh, it is. Just a few laps to go. If they only had not practiced another eight or nine laps. So Casey Kane, one of the bright young stars of the sport, pushed back to the garage, so close to victory. And the sour taste of defeat for Kane. After six wins this season. And you know what else that does? That moves Jimmy Johnson and those four fresh tires one spot closer, closer. Yeah. to Tony Stewart. They get the one to go signal, Alan. The caution was both a break and a problem for Jimmy Johnson. It was a break because it allowed him to close the gap on Tony Stewart that he was behind under the green flag because of taking the extra time on pit road. The problem is they ran off a few laps here under the yellow flag, reducing the number of laps he has to try and do something with this 20 car and the two between himself and the race leader. Matt? A little difference in reversal of uh, tires from last week, Zip. You just laid out the game plan for your man. Can your wheel man hold them off? I think so. I mean, we've had a good car. I'm glad we've got a couple cars in between us. Um, God, I can't even talk right now. Four, four to go here in Texas. This place used to be a real thorn in our side. Last couple of years, we've got a good handle on it, and uh, this would mean an awful lot for us to win here. And Greg Zipidelli laid out the situation for Tony, told him who had the four tires, who didn't. He says, but you can hold them off, and Stewart's reply simply was, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> Tony Stewart has six top tens in his nine races here at Texas. Outside the chase for the next Hell Cup, but has already won two of the seven chase races, trying to make it number three tonight. Scott Riggs is right behind him, driving for Ray Everham, looking for his first win. Then you've got a couple of chasers and Kevin Harvick and Jimmy Johnson. Well, and, and this, we always, it seems like we're getting down to this time of the race all the time on these last minute or late re restarts. This is where Tony Stewart needs to just have the, as good a restart as he's been having all night. He's got to get a good start to get away from that 48 car and hope that Jimmy Johnson gets hung up behind Harvick and Riggs. Inside of 10 to go, it's a single file restart. No lap cars in the way. Four to go as they take the green. Stewart leads at Texas. Wow, and Harvick left the door open on the right side, so Jimmy Johnson's going to get one of those spots in a hurry. Johnson in the 48 around Harvick in the 29, chasing race leader Tony Stewart. Does That's he not what Stewart wanted to see. Trust me, he's looking in the mirror for that 48 car. He wants to know where he's at. Riggs runs second, but here comes Johnson on those four fresh tires. Yeah, if he gets by Riggs here this lap without too much trouble, Tony's gonna be a sitting duck. But he's having a little trouble. Yep. He might get positioned down the oh, back oh, trailer. Bobble a little bit there with Riggs. 
And that holds up Johnson. Couldn't find the avenue to get by. Kevin Harvick's gonna go low. Riggs can't block them both. Johnson gets the position. Oh, he's getting them loose. Oh. He's getting them loose. And it Riggs is around hard into the wall. Caution is out. Oh, Kenseth goes, goes around. around. Kenseth, another championship chaser. Jeff Gordon is through the grass. Scott Riggs running second. Now a hard hit sits in the middle of the trioval here at Texas. But the race isn't over. Under NASCAR rules, we will have a green, white checker. We have two more laps. And that's not good news for Tony Stewart, but it's good news for Jimmy Johnson. There's Riggs. And it looked like on that deal, Harvick got right up on the 10 car and just took that air off that spoiler. Go back and take a look at what happened under caution here at Texas. The 10 bobbled just a little bit. The 29 was coming. I don't think the 29 ever hit him, but he got close enough to him where he took the air off the spoiler, and that's all it took. Oh, Truex just and gets tapped, but hangs on to it. And Junior just misses it. There you see Ken's at the round, gets tapped again. Gordon through the grass. Number of cars using pit road as an avenue to avoid the trouble on the front stretch. There's Harvick right behind Riggs. That was an extremely hard blow. There's a rear spring bouncing across the racetrack. It'll take a while to clean this up. Kenseth is just probably going, not again. Boy. He's hard to have to start in the back. Back to mud pie right now. Yeah. Kenseth has worked his way up to the ninth position. Yeah. Oh, he's been there and back and there and back. I mean, it's just been a long day for those guys. Listen. You can see the safer barrier there. The softer wall, as they call it in NASCAR. An energy absorbing barrier. Still a hard hit for Riggs. Boy, Carl Edwards went around. On board, Dale Earnhardt Jr. As soon as you see the smoke, you know. Trouble. Oh, there wasn't even smoke on that one. Hello, hello. Ooh. Wow. You're clear, you're clear, buddy. Good Tell you what, coming back on the racetrack, he bottomed out big time. Denny Hamlin's on board. Wow, oh. good job, Denny. Did he get a piece of it or not? I don't think he did. He's going to have to come in and change those tires because he flat spotted them. But you know, Earnhardt was in one wreck, but he has missed at least three tonight. Moments ago, before this, the night ended for Casey Kane. Marty Snyder is with him. And that, too, was a bit of a, bit of a surprise. Uh, any indication at all that you were having an engine problem? No, I mean, just just happened, you know, just a bad deal. But we were fast. Uh, Kenny did a good job. Guys did a good job. And there was only, I think, really one battle all night for the lead, and that was me and Tony. I had a blast. He was, uh, I thought we were flying, and he was still better than I was. So it was a good time. We had a, had a great race. and. The good thing is we have two races left. We can uh, still have a shot at winning, and uh, we can look forward to next year. We're going to have a lot of good race cars next year, too. You had finally gotten into position. Did you think you could maybe pass him? Right not. I mean, he was too good. I think if we could have had a caution with 20 to go and got four tires and worked on it a little bit, I think we had a shot, you know, at least battle him again, see what we had. But uh, he was too good on two tires. I don't think we could have even, even hung with him. Bill, a lot of late drama. Enough for you? <laughs> yeah, loving it. <laughs> it's loving it. And you know what it's doing, Marty? It's tightening up the chase for the next Hell Cup. Two races to go after tonight. Phoenix, Arizona next Sunday, then the season finale in Homestead, Florida in two weeks. And here are the points as they run right now. Matt Kenseth has closed to within six of Jimmy Johnson. Kenseth came in as the championship leader but started 36th and gave up the lead basically when the green flag came out. Football Night in America coming up next here on NBC, setting the stage for Sunday Night Football, the 
Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. Peyton Manning against Tom Brady. If the race reaches its scheduled conclusion, under the caution, NASCAR will make, make one attempt at a two-lap green flag, white flag, checkered flag finish. So after they clean the track, they will line these cars up, put out the green flag, and race for two laps. If the caution comes out after the green, the race will be over. There are eight scoring loops around the track. NASCAR will use the scoring loops and videotape replays to determine the final finishing order. Update on Dale Earnhardt Jr. from Marty Snyder. Well, Bill, as we watched him go through that wreck in the in-car camera, he got a little bit of left front damage from hitting his teammate, Martin Truex Jr., right behind the wheel that you see right there where that's flared out. They were worried the left front might be flat. They've looked at it several times. You see Jr. weaving it back and forth to make sure that the left front is not flat. They've determined it's not flat enough to bring him on the pit road. They would lose a lot of track position that way. So they're going to leave him out, hoping that the left front will stay up. Alan? Matt Kenseth will likely be coming down pit road here to take four tires. He was showing an eighth position on the racetrack, but NASCAR is readjusting some of those running positions based on where they were scored at the time the caution came out. Uh, Robbie Reiser just made the call for Matt to stay out on the racetrack. Given the number of cars that are on the lead lap, 15, that's the debate. How far back do we fall? How much of it can we get back with fresher tires? They've decided to stay out instead of pit and run out these last two laps. So they could steal a top 10 out of this thing yet, as despite where they've been running all day. We'll see. One thing about going back to Junior's car, I think that's going to affect the handle of that car quite a bit because that's a big aero deal right there. And I don't believe he came to Truex's car. I think that came when he hit the racetrack. He came he bottomed back. Bottomed out. He bottomed out. Right. That's what that's where that came from because we heard on his own board camera some heavy contact with the racetrack. Denny Hamlin another driver in the chase for the next hookup championship has been on and off of pit road. Hamlin currently fourth in the running order. Well he had, I'm telling you he had to change tires because he right. locked him up on that rack. Hamlin's fourth in the championship 14th in the running order. Lights are out on the pace car. That means the pace car will head for pit road. We'll put the green flag in the air. One attempt at two laps to decide today's race here at the Texas Motor Speedway. This is going to be this is going to be a good shootout right here. Two of the last four races here have been so decided by less than a half a second. Twelfth race here at the Texas Motor Speedway for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. In the first 11, 11 different winners. You got to remember too on this deal that really Stewart doesn't have anything to lose. He's not no. points racing here. Jimmy Johnson has to be a little bit more careful than Tony Stewart has to be. Jimmy Johnson took four tires under his most recent pit stop. Tony Stewart took two. Ready. Green flags in the Ready. air. Two laps to the side of Texas. Johnson hangs with Stewart on the start, looks at the high side, then ducks in behind him. Flash bulbs everywhere. Stewart low, Johnson high. Harvick in third. And Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer earn her junior sixth. Tony Stewart has been strong all day, has led 277 of the 348 laps. White flag, last lap. Pretty even that lap. I think he's going to be able to get him. Doesn't look that way. Down the back stretch for the final time. Tony Stewart won last week at Atlanta with a dominating run, strong pit stops, a good crew. Outside the chase for the next Dell Cup championship, cannot defend his title, but he can be strong down the stretch. Tony Stewart wins at Texas. What a run for Tony Stewart. Jason Shapiro, the car chief on that 20. And the Jerry Cook. The field was set for the next Tell Cup chase for the championship after the race in Richmond, Virginia in September. When Tony Stewart was locked out following that race, he said, we have one goal, to win them all. He has won three of the first eight, two to go. Phoenix and Homestead. 
the 278 of the 339 laps. Unofficially, it's Johnson, Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Clint Boyer. I wonder what car he'll bring to Homestead, BP. I would guess the same <laughs> car. Those fans are going to the fence because Tony Stewart's trademark is to climb the fence after a win. Unofficially, here are the championship standings with two races to go in the chase for the next Tell Cup. Jimmy Johnson just 17 points in front of the 17 team of Mac Kenseth. Earnhardt Jr., Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, the top five. The maximum point game possible in one race, 156. So next week at Phoenix, any one of those top five drivers could leave as the championship leader. I told him he better get him a mattress. He better get what? A mattress to put on the racetrack yeah. underneath. One of these days he's going to slip. Stewart taking off his safety equipment. Marks his car at the start finish line. Then he will climb the fence. Unofficial results for tonight's race. Tony Stewart. Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, good comeback from Kyle Busch. Strong run by Clint Boyer. Earnhardt Jr with an amazing run. Tony Stewart climbs the fence to the flag stand and will celebrate with the fans. For those of you who want to continue watching NASCAR racing from Texas, please tune to CNBC for our post-race report. And coming up next on NBC, it's Football Night in America with Bob, Chris, Sterling, and the bus for all of today's NFL action leading up to Sunday Night Football. Our race coverage continues on CNBC. Football Night in America is next.